Howdy, friends. This is the Magic City Motormouth Fast Eddie Lane with your invitation to join yours truly, along with Mark Mabo Bowman and the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, every Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific, for Beyond Ringside Live. Wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports talk, and a whole lot more. Keep your eyes open on BeyondRingside.com for all of upcoming show information, and of course, catch us on social media as well. Until then, we'll see you this Sunday, 6.30 Eastern, for Beyond Ringside Ringside Live on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. This is Dale the Demon Torborg. My name is Bryce Remsburg. I'm the Chikar Senior Official. This is April Hunter from AprilHunter.com. I'm Bobby Chez, the three-time world champion, Showtime expert analyst. This is Coolio with the flow, a.k.a. the Ghetto Gourmet. This is Dan the Beast Severn, the only Triple Crown champion in the UFC history. Hi, everybody. This is Jerry the King Lawler. That's right. WWE Hall of Famer. This is Jeff Damon from Deadliest Warrior on Spike TV. You have tuned in and are now live listening to the three-time NWA heavyweight champion of the world, Scrap and Anna Pierce. And just like you, I am also locked in. And, brother, we are beyond ringside. Not sure what that means. Listen tomorrow night. <laughs> Want to say greetings, good evening. How you doing? Welcome to Beyond Ringside. Back to basics. The ten count is on, where everything is on the table. Nothing is off the record. Thank you to everybody tuning in this evening through BeyondRingside.com as well as the Beyond Ringside Radio app for Android, Amazon, and BlackBerry. Got a number of different sources, including the TuneIn mobile app, cross-platform. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I know, been clearing my throat half the day, why should now be any different? I hope everybody has been enjoying a great Takedown Tuesday. I just thought of that. I'm pretty sure it's been thought of before. By the time it gets around to me, over 2 million people have already thought of it, so I'm going to leave it alone. Um, from that vantage point, let me go ahead and say, in about 20 minutes from right now, I'm going to be joined by a good friend of the family, Phil Stamper. A lot of things going on. Trust me on this one. You think last week was hectic. It gets even crazier. Uh, Combat Zone Wrestling with a major double shot coming up and starting this weekend. And from there, uh, there's a lot of other shows we're going to be talking about in the, in the over the next couple of hours. Stan Grubb from Wrestle Rage Radio, who has been on hiatus, family situations in play. Looking forward to having Stan on around 9.30 Central Time, uh, 10.30 Eastern Time. You know, I'm going to dive right into it on my side of the coin. And let me just go ahead and put this out there. There is a time and a place for negativity. Not really. But there's always a time and a place for reality. I've heard from people who watched Bound for Glory TNA Wrestling. You'd still be amazed at the number of people that didn't even know that TNA was having a pay-per-view this past Sunday. Impact Wrestling. The majority of the people who watched the pay-per-view gave it critical acclaim. The majority of the people who didn't watch it were bitching about it, even though they weren't even watching it. I started this on Sunday and last Tuesday, and I'm going to carry this forward. I'm going to pay it forward on this one. If you want to clarify that you haven't watched a product for a while because it sucked while you were watching it, Clarify that, please. I watch Impact almost every thir- every Wednesday night when I get a chance. When the DVR works. Similar to last night, thank you Charter and Scientific Atlanta for totally screwing up Monday Night Raw. It's in three parts. And I had to get all three of them manually. I didn't, excuse me, I have yet to watch Bound for Glory. Unfortunately, this pay-per-view hits at a time where, unfortunately, my finances suck. So I'm being honest with you. I was, when reading the results and listening to what, watching and listening to what people have had to say about the pay-per-view, about Bound for Glory, 
I wish I'd have watched it. All the way up to the main event. Longtime listeners to Beyond Ringside Products are probably going to know where I'm about to hit with this. I've never been a huge Matt Hardy fan. Do I need to say more? I will. And I'm going to. Um, Hear me out on this one, by the way. Upon reading the fact and hearing from other people the fact that Jeff was involved in the decision for Matt to get the championship, I don't think it hurts EC3 that much. But for EC3 to have had the run with that title that he has had to have it taken off him and put on Matt freaking Hardy. Thank you, Paul Heyman. Really? I would have been okay. Yeah. If it was Jeff, it would have been much better if it'd been Kurt angle. I would have been okay if it'd been drew Galloway. You know, I don't dislike Matt Hardy. I, I, I'm i just not a fan of the way he comes across on television. Even when he's babyface, he's negative and gruff. I understand we're in the era of the antihero. And I know that started many, many moons ago. But the fact of the matter stands, and for me, there are some people who are better as a heel than a face. And just like there are some that are better as the fan favorite as opposed to being the rule breaker. I just, I'm, I'm still bewildered at the concept of why companies put so much faith. Now, granted, okay, I know I'm going to get a ton of comments on Facebook and Twitter and by email. That's fine. You're entitled to your opinion, but so am I. And I'll respect your opinion to the same point that you respect mine. Just like over the last few days, I've been getting, um, especially late last night, I was getting snipered by all the little Bella Twit fans. I'll get to that in a minute. Before I go any further, congratulations to Matt Hardy on getting the TNA championship. I mean, it's a it, even if TNA folds tomorrow, it's still it's still a world championship in theory and in practical application. I hope that TNA does not fold tomorrow. I hope it doesn't fold at the end of the year. The only thing that I hope is that people would give it a fair chance. They've made their mistakes. I understand that. I'm one of the first ones to say both sides of this coin. They've gotten it right more than they've gotten it wrong in recent days. I made it very clear that one time the reason why I stopped watching on that particular show was because Jeff Jarrett wouldn't shut up and he gave the mic to Karen. And if the front office of Global Force Wrestling wants to get pissed off at me for saying that, that's your prerogative. You're not spending money on my show. You're not bringing me guests. (laughs) Hey, look, and even if you were, I'm not going to lie for you. I'm not. I don't lie for Vince McMahon. I don't lie for Dixie Carter. I don't lie for Ring of Honor, Joe Coff. I don't lie for Lucha Underground, Krista Joseph, and the rest of the front office. I'm sure as hell not going to lie for GFW. Oh, the almighty Jeff Jarrett, the chosen one. Look, I've, I've worked with Jeff before. He is a super nice guy. But when Jeff gets on an extended rant on a microphone, it becomes unbearable. The only thing that's worse is Triple H in the 90s, late 90s. You know what I'm talking about when I say that. Triple H as a heel going on an extended uh, microphone run is enough to make fingernails on a chalkboard seem like a massager to your soul. Honest. Legit. I mean, I'm not being overdramatic. I just... With the exception of that one show, like I said, and Karen Jarrett is worse on the microphone than Jeff Jarrett is. Why do they insist 
on making her a part of a storyline when she's not an authority figure. She's not in ring talent. She's not a manager or a valet or a referee. She is Jeff Jarrett's wife. That is the way she was cast. I'm not going to get on this long form. I'm stopping there. She's just horrible on a microphone. Worse than Dixie trying to be a heel. And that's pretty damn bad. But let's come back to it. The finish of the World Championship match on Bound for Glory. Like I said, I have not personally seen it. I'm going off what I've heard and what I've read on sites as well as fans. And some workers who watch the pay-per-view. Wrestlers, workers, whatever you want to say on this regard. The way that the match ended in such a cluster, you always worry about whether or not your current champion is going to look weak in the title transfer. That's what you can't afford in any capacity. You never want the new champion to outshine the old champion in the transfer. There's going to be a shine, yes. But as I said, knowing the fact that Jeff Hardy turned the situation to where Matt could win the title. I don't think it hurts EC3 that much. I don't. The kid has carried the company. I say kid because he's younger than me and most of you are. What it boils down to, for some reason, and like I said, I would have been okay had it been Drew Galloway because he's an untried commodity as the flagship for a company. He really is. Whereas, they've tried it with Matt before. Especially on SmackDown during the brand split. He did not do that well. He was greeted with a rousing round of avarice in Ring of Honor. And everywhere he's gone. Now, once again, I know he's got his cult following. And I know he's a hell of a worker inside the ring. He busts his ass. He really does. But as far as on-camera presence, he has been less than impressive. And that's just me telling the truth from my, from my seat. Behind, the, behind this microphone in Studio One. Now, I make the reference to Jeff a minute ago, Hardy. If Jeff Hardy had been in that match, it would have been, everybody would have said, oh, screw it, Hardy's getting the belt back. Jeff's getting the belt back. At least with Matt being in there and a part of a triple threat along with Drew Galloway, there was a little bit of a question as to what would happen and how. So I commend the front office of TNA for that. I really do. They've also given themselves a loophole. If they decide to come back with a live impact this week or a new impact. To the point where Dixie, your referee, cheated on the champion and got the challenger the title. Ethan has a valid point and argument for Hardy to be stripped or the title to be held up. Now, if they reverse the if he forces Dixie to reverse the decision and give him back the belt, that's perfectly cool. If Dixie refuses to reverse the decision, that's perfectly cool. They have to play it smart at this point because you've got new eyes, hopefully new eyes that are watching this product and hopefully more returning eyes that are watching the product. I know there are so many people that have written Impact Wrestling off for dead. And that's sad. Because once again, the majority of the people that have been doing this are people who turned off during the Hogan-Bischoff debacle. And I understand why. I almost did. I almost did myself. But you have to keep the world in proper perspective. Just because Coca-Cola back years ago changed their formula and amazingly enough, the, way, the place you can find the regular form, the old formula now is in Mexico. Thank God for import laws. This is the only time I've been happy about NAFTA. <laughs> the North American Free Trade Agreement. Look it up. Yahoo it. Yahoo! But when Coke changed their recipe and it became New Coke, we're talking Coca-Cola that at one point in time had probably about 99.7% of the market share in sodas. 
They basically changed their formula to make it taste like Pepsi, which had 0.02% of the market at the time. To which people left Coke and went to Pepsi. You have to understand something. And even though they say they've changed the formula, it's still corn syrup, not sugar. And they've still got other crap in there. So, look, once you change, you can't always go back. You can hope, hope, only hope to go in a different direction. 24 after the hour on this sixth day of October. I call it Enochtober, and I'm not the only one. It is originally designated by a tag team partner on BR Live and the host of the To Be Determined show, the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. He calls it Enochtober. Works for me. I'm good. He's also the one who started the term beyond cast. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Thank you. This past Sunday on Beyond Ringside Live, special thank you to the proletariat Boar of Moldova for coming out at Boar is War, B-O-A-R is War. This past Sunday on Beyond Ringside Live, had a great time. I kid you not, when we originally set up the interview with Boar, uh, Mabo, Mabo and I were actually talking about maybe going 30 minutes, 30 to 40. And lo and behold, I look at the clock and it's like, holy crap, an hour's gone by. And that's how much fun we had during the interview. It's, on, it's in rotation here on the station. And matter of fact, I believe it's due to come up first as soon as we sign out live. So... Um, I'll set that up just to make, just to be on the safe side. When when things shift over, we wrap up live and turn it back over to the server into a pre-recorded programming. I'll make sure that's the first thing to come up. And Bor will be coming on around 30 minutes in on BR Live. If you haven't checked it out, great interview. The guy is great on my, um, on the interviews. Definitely a pleasure to have him on board. Love to be able to catch him live sometime. If I wish that I could have made it to the IWA Deep South um, show earlier the last when he was up there, and I would have loved to have been able to catch him live. Definitely will catch him the next time he's anywhere close to the state. Speaking of close to the state, want to go ahead and mention this one more time real quick. Peach State Wrestling Alliance this past Saturday night, absolute blast. Had a great time. If you missed that show, you missed a hell of a lot. You really did. For our friends in Central Georgia, um, East Alabama, definitely. Um, October 17th is the return date. Triple threat match of the main event for the Peach State Heritage Championship. It will be Jimmy Rave defending against Cedric Alexander and Kyle Matthews. You have got three of the best technical wrestlers to hit a ring in one ring at the same time. No time limit. Check this out. Like I said, Central Georgia, North and South Georgia don't care. We're going to have some more information this Saturday. On the Saturday Showcase, the Shooters Gallery will be open. And Shane, myself and tag team partner Shane Knowles with Peach State. Um, he's actually going to be bringing on the full card for this weekend. He will might even let us have an exclusive. Of course, he's part of the team. We get those now. <laughs> I'm going to take the final three in this segment. And I want to go in and lay this one out there. It's okay to cheer for your favorite. It's okay for you to obsess on social media. But when you start coming back on someone else and basically open up the guns, and I'm not talking about a shoot, I'm talking about become vile, explicit, profane in your retorts to people on social media, grow the mortal hell up. Seriously. I've been getting messages over the um, last, what, 19 hours, 20 hours? Because of some commentary that I'd made about the Bella Twits. I'm entitled to my opinion, you little twerps. It's funny because I was um, I was in an exchange with Wiggy from Pantsless Radio. And the view from Phil Singer Hall. And apparently she's been going through the same thing I'm going through. So, for all you little Bella nerds, understand this. You can disagree with me all day long. I welcome an open and honest debate. If you can prove to me when Nikki Bella has shown pure talent or when Brie Bella has shown personality and talent, I'll secede. Argument will be dropped. But every time I've watched them, <laughs> snooze. That is why my comment from last night especially Oh, never mind, Bella match, time to change the channel. With all due respect to Sasha Banks, who I have a world of respect for her in-ring ability, Alicia Fox has come a long way. Tamina is Tamina. Naomi is Naomi. 
I never know which one of those two are going to show up, which Tamina is going to show up, which Naomi is going to show up. But as far as it, the, as far as the Bellas go, when the best thing you can say about a Bella in the ring is, well, that wasn't horrible. What does that tell you? And for the PG revolution, the way that it's supposed to be, I've never seen one woman have more so-called nipple slips than Nikki Bella has had in the last few months. Really? At least Brie is halfway dressed. But yes, this is the PG era, and Nikki Bella, because she's banging John Cena, gets to run around, list, run around looking like a dime store whore? Really? WWE, really? I mean, Charlotte's outfit is not much better. But she ain't letting it all hang out like Nikki does. But I'm not going to go full scale on that. I'm not going to waste my time. I'm not going to waste this station's time, my station's time, on an extended rant about the Bella Twits yet again. I just wish the front office of WWE would have the same standards apply to everybody regardless of who they're having sex with. But I guess when Bree's married to Daniel Bryan and Nikki's still trying to bang John Cena and their mother is engaged or married to John Laurinaitis, oh God, we'll never get rid of them. Please? WWE fans deserve better. I was hoping that when when everything happened with the Divas Revolution, that the Bella's contract would run out and they could fade off quietly into the sunset. But yet, no. Every time they're prominently pushed in their, um, on, into our faces, it gets old. Let the spotlight go to someone more deserving. Better yet, let someone who's talented have the spotlight. Talent is not sexually transmitted, so therefore the Bellas are pretty much SOL in my book. So to keep this in proper perspective... WWE, yet again, you have a double standard in place. That's something that you need to work on real quick, very quickly, plain and simple. Folks, going to go to the bottom of the hour break when I come back when the show resumes. Going to be joined by a good friend of the family, the Phenom, Phil Stamper, right here on Beyond Ringside Back to Basics. Told you, everything's on the table. Nothing is off the record. And we'll be back right after this. When planning your next party or special event, insist on the best. Full Range Entertainment is a professional entertainment company providing a full range of services. From professional disc jockeys and MCs to catering and photography, when the details of your special day must be perfect, call us first. Wedding receptions, corporate parties, school functions, birthday celebrations, and more. We also have Birmingham's largest selection of karaoke tracks available. With over 40 years combined experience, Full Range Entertainment can provide you with the talent and professionalism you need and deserve to make your next event one you'll never forget. For more information on the full range of services we offer, call 533-HITS, that's 533-H-I-T-S, or check us out on our website at fullrangeentertainment.com. This is Dan B. Severn, the only Triple Crown champion in the UFC history, and you're listening to Beyond Ringside. You better pay attention, otherwise, I know where you live. The To Be Determined Show live Wednesday nights, 9 Central Standard Time. Join myself, the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, the Grand Design, Clyde Braddock, and the Magic City Monroe, Fast Eddie Lane, as we take you to the edge of uncensored. Yes, we go uncensored, so make sure you have your earmuffs. Ask your parents, for those of you you know that are a little young, maybe under 18, but make sure if you have any heart conditions or any mental defects, Please listen, because they may take effect right here, live, every Wednesday night, 9 Central Standard Time, Beyond Ringside Radio Network, beyondringside.com. Everybody out there, this is the human hand grenade, Danny Only, one half of the hate junkies, one fifth of POD, and you are locked in to Beyond Ringside. This is Danny Cage from the World Famous Monster Factory, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. Sunday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern here on BeyondRingside.com. Join us for the Midnight Black Mass. Myself, the Reverend Dan Wilson, brings you the dark gospel of professional wrestling, uncensored, 
unedited, uncut, and not for the faint of heart. You can find out more about us at youtube.com slash pottyhumor or subscribe at Potty Humor on iTunes and Stitcher today. This is the seven-figure deal, Ace Rockwell. And as long as Wicked Nemesis isn't on the show, please listen. You're locked in to the on Ringside. Nineteen before the top of the hour on this Tuesday night, sixth day of Enoch October. There's a pronunciation in there somewhere. We're going to find it. Hooked on phonics. Never ordered it. Never needed it until two weeks ago. We're going to take it from there. Fast Eddie Lane live from Studio One. It's beyond ringside. Back to basics. Rolls on. I'd like to welcome in good friend of the family, Phil Stamper. My brother, how you been? I'm good. And for some reason, when you said hooked on phonics, I kept thinking of speaking spell. I don't know why. I don't know why, but it was in my brain. See? Okay. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, I know. E.T. <laughs> now, I remember a stand-up. And maybe that's why it's in my brain, because I did, did happen to make a trip this past weekend to Universal and happen to see if he could speak and spell at the E.T. ride. That's right. I went on the E.T. ride. Uh, Universal. I was in down in Florida? Yep. Dude, did you drive or fly? I drove. If I'd have known that, you'd. <laughs> I was in Atlanta. You probably passed right by me. I, I, I did the 95 route, um, so I didn't go through Atlanta, unfortunately, um, which took a few people off. I was, I was pleasantly surprised they got to the shit day. Um, not that I made them mad, but, but that they were like, oh, well, I really wanted to, come, I wanted, really wanted to see you, bro. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Um, and then on my way back, knowing that uh, there was all the weather damage that was happening in South Carolina, right. I was like, well, let me just try to get to my friends in Myrtle Beach, because I was going to stay the night there, and then they had shut down 95. Really? Uh, I got on Interstate 20, and then both interstates to go around Columbia um, were shut down. Really? And so I ended up going through the heart of Columbia, South Carolina, somehow found the one random bridge that, that was okay to cross over and made it out on the other side, and I was like, well, you know what? I can either go back east and try to deal with the storm, or I can go to north to Charlotte, and I've never been to Charlotte. So I went to Charlotte, North Carolina, and went to Carowinds. So I went from Universal Studio to Carowinds, because I am a 10-year-old with a little bit of money now, and <laughs> decided to do their Halloween stuff, too. <laughs> I'm the same way. When I get when I manage to make it out of town and do a road trip, it's kind of like, how much trouble can I get into? Except I, I've got this man versus food thing going for me. I will find the place. And also, Triple D. I will find places. Like, I went to the AWE live event, Atlanta Wrestling Entertainment, um, about three, four weeks back. And I was trying to get over in enough time to where I could go to a place called Full Cart because I'd seen it on Triple D and I knew where it was. They had a Triple Decker mm-hmm. Meatball Burger. Should I say that again? Okay. A triple decker meatball burger. I affectionately refer to it hashtag stroke on a bun. I'm going to, I didn't, I, unfortunately though, I didn't get a chance to get over in time. I was running behind schedule leaving Birmingham thanks to everything else going on. I hate it when that happens. But there will be another time. There will be another AWE show, and I will make it back over just like there's going to be another Peach State show. But there will be no more trips to Hooters immediately after that. When I get, uh uh, no, uh uh, no, sorry. I have friends who work for Hooters. They know my stance, they know my position. Uh uh, not going to happen again. I'm going back to B dubs. Okay. I'm going to find another place that serves wings. But now I want to dive straight on into a number of different things because I know you've got a lot going on first. The last time we spoke was a few weeks after you had officially taken over Heartland. How are things going with the organization and the restructuring for that? So I am still in the process of cataloging everything. I mean, like I said before, they had something like eight years of weekly television. So I'm still putting all of that, together and so that is taking a little bit more time than I expected um, financially the next well the next part is the financial part and just trying to finalize pulling all of those things together um, and life happens in between I mean yes I know I just talked about a vacation that was because everything sort of happens the last second with Heartland the vacation was paid for before Heartland so now I didn't dive into a personal fund that I didn't have in order to go on this vacation um, 
because I, I can I can I can already hear it my it, but from other people like well wait a minute you're saying you're trying to put this, put this event together and you just spend money on a trip I'm like I did but I paid for it before I went off the, before I bought HWA it's still fairly recent so um, the next step is just getting the financials in order because that is really what the next step needs to be um, I've gotten a lot of input and a lot of, of advice solicited and unsolicited from a lot of people about what they think I should do next. Um, so really it's just preparing to take the next step, which is just the money has to be together. Um, I mean, one of my biggest pet peeves in wrestling is that some promoters move forward, run forward into a brick wall without having all the parts together, without having their money together, really, and then making false promises that they can't commit to, which then right. in turn ruins their reputation, ruins their reputation as a company. And I'm not going to do that, especially to something that has the legacy of HWA. Exactly. Respectable, appreciated, understandable, all of the above. Yeah, it's kind of like some promoters jump in that Lamborghini and forget there's no engine in it yet. Right. So it ain't going nowhere. You have to make sure to put the engine, then the oil, then the gas, then the key in the ignition. <sighs> it, it, it's, it doesn't cease to amaze me. It really does not cease to amaze me how many different people will just try to fast track things. It's like, no, if I go ahead and get this off the ground, something's gonna, something good's going to happen. This Field of Dreams was a movie. Field of Dreams was a movie. In reality, right. you have to plan, you have to put a strategy together, and you have to properly finance this damn thing, right? I hate promotions that do the whole Field of Dreams concept of, I will build a ring and they will come. It's like, well, no, they won't if they don't know you are there. And like, even in Field of Dreams, if you think about it, God told those people to go. Guess what? God isn't telling people to come to your ring that nobody knows about. Exactly. And by the same token, there is, um, speaking of telling people to go, because there is a underscored name that you and I both know very well that puts together a calendar. So if there's promoters out there that want to try to help get their, get their show out, um, they can get in touch with a certain person that we both know, right? Right. That would be Nate Stein. And Nate Stein is rather intelligent about putting together those, those things that we call events on in indie wrestling. Uh, you can find him mysteriously on uh, Facebook at from the desk of Nate Stein and Send him your events to be added to the calendar. I've got, oh, by the way, um, I need to go in. I'll do this live just for the hell of it because I can. Um, normally, Global Championship it, Wrestling is live on the last weekend out of the month. They are not doing, we are not doing a show in October this year due to extenuating circumstances. I'll let you know now. Global Championship Wrestling returns on November 21. So, I'll still send you a note. I'm just... Telling you and telling the rest of the world at the same time. <laughs> it's amazing how I do these things. Multitasking. I can actually do this once or thrice. Well, now, but you, you're kind of, um, you know, Nate is cool enough to send over this list. And we do actually try to cover a number of different shows that are listed on this list. And notice how I'm still keeping Nate and Phil separate kids. But, oh, cool. Thank you. I'll eat that during the next break. I get customized service here at Studio One. Thank you, her. I'm, <laughs> I told you like, there would be no th happening here. <laughs> um, I was just brought a BLT and, oh. also, and also told that I'm number one, but there are so many different shows that are, um, that I see. And we've had a chance to matter of fact, the, um, one of the shows that you've got listed on there is this coming Saturday night. It's excellence professional wrestling based out of Sellerville, um, seller, actually Sellersville, Pennsylvania, seven o'clock start time. We had the, um, as a special guest this past Sunday was the proletariat board of Moldova came on spent an hour with us tremendous interview um have you worked with them before no i have not definitely check them out when you get a chance to shameless plugs <laughs> gotta love them right but I'll now also them. speaking of companies that you do a lot with uh one of course is the do i say on again off again or love hate relationship of the millennium and that would be combat zone wrestling <laughs> my my brain went to three different places in that one sentence. Um, yes, Combat Zone Wrestling has an event this weekend. Yeah, this coming Saturday night. Uh, this coming Saturday, September the tenth, uh, they are going to be back at Flyer Skate Zone Home, 
601 Laurel Oak Road in Voorhees, New Jersey. Um, Tangled Web 8. It is hard to believe they've gotten a number 8 on this. Because I followed... I mean, again... I I said it's hard to believe. That is number 8 or is that number 18? It is... Oh, it is number 18. Um, uh, Okay. I'm going to say just... uh, Oh, I feel so bad. This is not me calling anybody out. But, you know, as times evolve and as looks evolve... Um, I think CZW is ready for that next leap forward. Um, and, and no, it is Tangled Web 8. Um, I apologize. Um, and I think what we're looking at, what CZW is really going to be in need of moving forward is revamping their video, revamping their uh, graphic work, revamping a lot of their the social media presence. And, and in a way, we, we have done some of the social media stuff recently. But it's sort of like, well, especially on social media, you have to keep it fresh. You have to keep it current. Um, and have been recognized by a couple different sites now for having, um, I think, I, I'm trying to remember the, what, they, what they called it, but like the best YouTube and the best social media presence because we're so active. Um, I, think the, I think we can do a better job. Um, and I've told the team that. Uh, some people didn't like it and some people did. Uh, but, but I think that's just it. You have to stay fresh with different content. Um, and I think we're at a point now like we're rehashing all the, you know, Women Crush one Monday, Women Crush Wednesdays and Man Crush Mondays and Tag Team Tuesdays and like, okay, we, like, that's cute. We need to mix it up into adding in some other things. Part of social media is to be interactive. We need to now build on that level of interactivity. Um, but I, but I'll put it out there. We are looking for people with experience in graphic work, with experience in uh, video editing, experience uh, doing a lot of the things behind the scenes that take a pro wrestling organization to run. Um, and even on the aspect of video animation, you know, some people are like, well, I, I animate stuff. I don't think I can do anything for wrestling. And my response is, are you kidding me? Like, we make videos. We would love you if you could do video animation. Um, so it, it, it really is behind the scenes you need all the help you can get. And I remember uh, when I first started in professional wrestling, I started working behind the scenes um, before I got trained to be in the ring. And I used to work for Q-Ball Carmichael at IPWA. And I remember he sat me down one time and he was like, I feel like I'm telling a story about a story about a story, but he, he sat me down and, and I was helping him put things together. And he was like, you know, I really appreciate everything you do and I'm really glad that you're here and, you know, I think of something Paul Heyman told me where he said that he it really takes a good core amount of volunteers to help a pro wrestling organization move forward and how he never felt like he found a core of volunteers to do that. And at CZW, I think we're fortunate that we have a good mix of all those volunteers and paid staff, um, but it's good, it takes more than that. And, and CZW is talking about doing some great things coming up very soon. I mean, we'd already put up the word about an I, a pay-per-view presence, not an eye pay-per-view presence, but an actual, like, on-cable pay-per-view. Uh, there's some other things that are lingering out there in the ether that I can't talk about yet, but if you're reading well enough in between the lines, hopefully <laughs> you are understanding. Um, but that takes hard work on our side behind the scenes. Um, and that echoes all, through all the organizations I work with. Every, I mean, every independent company in the world needs more assistance and further assistance. Um, yeah, I'm rambling now. I it's okay. Dude, this is me you're talking to. How often do I do that? <clears throat> Quite. <laughs> <laughs> Quite. <laughs> but let's take a look at it real quick. Tango Web 8 coming up this Saturday, October 10 from Combat Zone Wrestling in Voorhees, New Jersey. Um, one of the matches. Now, I'm just going to go straight to it because... I I really this is one that I would love to see in person. Rory Gulak Masada should be an excellent matchup. I mean, everybody knows Masada, and Masada is just he'll just punish somebody, and not for any ill content. He'll just take you to your limit, and Rory is just nuts. Like, legitimately, Rory is insane. There isn't, like, sometimes there's not synapses connected. 
and, and now that he's part of the, now that he has revealed himself to really be Rory Gulak, which everybody really knew all along, let's face it, he's Drew Gulak's brother, you put them side by side, there's no missing the fact that they are brothers. Um, but now that they are the amazing Gulak, uh, Rory's level of insanity has, has tripped a level, um, and so to have them face off against each other, it's just going to be violence. That's all. That it, it's just going to be unmitigated violence, and Rory's probably going to try to do something stupid uh, just to show everybody how much he wants to pull off a victory against Masada. You're going to hate me for this, and I'm going to get I'm going to get mailed because of this one. If you'll notice the the promo shot that is out there on CZWrestling.com slash upcoming, the picture of Rory Gulak in this particular one, the pose and the facial expression kind of reminds me of a young uh, Castagnoli. Go back and look at it. You'll see what I see. I'm going to go see the wrestling. You're pulling it up, aren't you? You're pulling it up. Tell me with that facial expression and the look that he has on his face that he he could not pass for a young Castagnoli. We're doing this live, kids. There is no editing. Screw it. <laughs> I, I I mean I can I can see it because you know he's he's in his twenties and he's bald so I can totally see it. No, the beard, everything else, the way the eyes are set and everything else, it makes me think of a young Claudio. Sorry, I had to do that one. Uh, also <laughs> coming up at Tangled Web Eight, Greg Excellent taking on good friend of ours here on the show, Dick Justice. This, this is interesting. I mean, you you both of these guys when people think of them, they think of them as rather jovial guys, uh, comedy. Uh, and then after the, after Greg's last match, Dick Justice walked in the ring, went to go shake his hand and Greg slapped his hand away and pushed Dick Justice. So this is interesting to me. This is not the friendly, jovial Greg excellent that people have gotten to know. And I've, I've seen Greg not in a good place before and just something, something isn't right. Something's just not clicking. <laughs> Should be definitely one to keep your eyes on. Also, this coming Saturday, October 10. I was trying to say 10-8 for a second there. It's 10-10. Chainsaw Joe Gacy, AR Fox. I mean, Joe Gacy, I would say in the last couple of years, has been probably one of the most most improved people in CZW. Um, he's, just, he, he's just sort of changed his own destiny, if you will. And then you have Air Fox, who now this and this is the nerdy geeky side of me for just half a second, uh, because I want to know what's going on in the world of wrestling and I want to see how things are trending. I track website analytics um, for different wrestling companies to see who has what ranking uh, in the world of professional wrestling. And, and Combat Zone Wrestling is very fortunate that it has been able to stay pretty much in the, within the top. I don't know five. Of, of professional wrestling companies in the world. And I can also see what people are searching for on uh, search sites in order to get to CZWrestling.com. And they're typing in mostly CZW Combat Zone. You know, they're using words associated to the company itself. The only wrestler, if you go to Alexa.com, that will appear under what search terms are being used to get you to CZW is AR Fox. And I think that is so telling about the interest that people have in him and that what CZW has to offer for him is that, that kind of vehicle and that, that place to show off what he is able to do and people are tracking with that and coming to CZ Wrestling because of it. This Saturday, David Starr taking on good friend of the family over here at BR, the Juice JT Dunn. I want this to be over. I want these two to just kill each other. Really? I want, they, these two have just absolutely decimated each other, not only in combat zone wrestling, but at promotions all through the East Coast. These two just need to put the final nail in the coffin that is and finally will never be again the juicy product. <laughs> I uh, uh, actually recently worked with JT down here um, in the southeastern U.S. He made an appearance for Atlanta Wrestling Entertainment and um, over at the Legacy a few weeks uh, back a few weeks ago. Tremendous talent, great to see in person. I'm going to sit back and say this, folks: if you haven't seen Dunn in person, if and you get a chance to this Saturday, you get a chance with David Starr and JT Dunn. It is going to be absolute nuts. Plain and simple, this will be a match that you do not blink during, and there. 
okay, here's where I give a little look behind the curtain. Those who know me know that there are some buzzwords that I use on a regular basis. But it's not every time when I use the words don't blink outside of a Kenny Chesney song. Think about it. When I know a match is going to be intense, fast paced, solid from bell to bell, I will use the words don't blink. That's also a cryptic way for Eddie to say this has matched the nine implications. Once yeah. again, go ahead. No, no, I was laughing. I was laughing. You're good. <laughs> now, now, so is you know, former CZW World Heavyweight Champion. Pepper Parks, you know, you know, former Heartland Wrestling Association Heavyweight Champion. I right. I'm throwing that out there. Uh, you know, these... Uh, so Sozio tried to come to the aid of Matt Tremont, who was being consistently beat down by uh, Team TV Ready, who is Pepper Parks and Black G's. And because he got involved, now now Pepper has a little bit of a beef with Sozio. Sozio has a bit of a beef with Pepper Parks. But the thing that will sort of even the odds right now is, well, of course you still will have Black G's in it somewhere hanging out. Well, you're going to have Matt Tremont somewhere hanging out, too. Cherry Bomb unfortunately, at the last CZW and WSU event during WSU uh, where she was defending her title, she broke her collarbone yeah. in the middle of the match and has had to have surgery. She's going to be there. She's not going to be able to physically interfere with this match. So I think it will be really interesting because I think this will really be a one-on-one encounter between Socio and Pepper Parks. Tim Donst defends the wired championship against that's your Joey Janela. Thank you. No, I was like, I was wondering if you were waiting for a dramatic pause or you were wanting me to say it. So, I was wanting you to uh, say it because I couldn't remember if it's Janela or Janela. So Janela. Yeah. Thank you. So Tim Donst after taking the wired title, it, there's like a triangle of people between him and Fred Picard and Joe Gacy who were all sort of vying for the, the TV Warrior Championship. And now Tim Donst, who has lied about lying about not having cancer, or about having cancer. Did I say that right? He lied about lied about lying about not having cancer? Right. Uh, it's just Tim is not there sometimes. And, you know, he's he's more deceptive than I think people really give him credit for. Right. But then you're going up against someone like Joey Janela. And this, let me pull this curtain way back. And this is not to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm calling a spade a spade. A lot of people like Janela. A lot of people like what he brings to the table. And Janela is tremendously hungry. Janela is willing to do whatever it takes to show, hey, look at me, because I'm what's hot. I'm the next thing that you need to be watching out for. Janela was never expected to stay this long at CZW. Really? He, he was, and again, I'm not trying to call anybody out. He was a filler, and, but this is what he did. He made the best of his opportunity. He showed what he could bring to CZW, and his, he's one of the very few people who I will very clearly articulate that he has earned his spot. And he's still earning his spot. Let me make no correction. He, he just didn't walk in the door and go, oh, we like the two things that you did that were really cool. But he showcases himself very well. And he is a tremendous athlete. So Tim Donson is going to have his hands very busy with Joey Janela. But Janela is still learning. And I don't know if he'll be able to get past the deceptiveness of Tim Donson. Tag Team Championships on the line. Team Tremendous take on the Beaver Boys. Beaver Boys former CCW Tag Team Champion, Team Tremendous. You know, they've had a little bit of a rocky few months, Team Tremendous. I mean, Bill Carr uh, had had an injury a few months ago and then a bad personal situation that came up with Candice LeRae then filled in for him. So they've had a little bit of a tumultuous time just between themselves. And then you have the Beaver Boys themselves after winning the CCW World, World Tag Team Championship uh, in the past. You know, they then sort of got uh, catapulted to have that opportunity to work a number of promotions around the world, and now these two are going to face off. And the thing is, they all know each other very, very well. And when you have a match like that where everybody knows each other very, very well, 
I, I just think it's going to click. It's just going to be so so awesome of a match to see. The Tangled Web Deathmatch. The Nation of Intoxication versus Ohio is for Killers. These guys have been going at each other for a while. For <laughs> months. Yeah, it's almost been a year that these, these guys have been tearing into each other. Yeah. And finally, four on four battle, you know, everybody brings out the, you know, the, the, the smoking gun, the hidden gun, the, the hired hand, whatever you want to call it. it. All four members of Ohio is for killers against all four members of the Nation of Intoxication in the Tangled Web match. Now, I don't know exactly how they're going to be setting up this, this, this spectacle, and it is something to be seen. I mean, the very first Tangled Web I went to, it was Drake Younger versus Scotty Vortex, and the, the, they had two rings. One ring was totally uh, draped in barbed wire like a spider web, and they had, I think they had platforms off the top of the ring that they could go through, and there was glass, and there were just all sorts of deathmatch insanity. So you, I have no idea what to expect to see in this matchup because I don't even know what the physical ring is going to look like. And on the line this Saturday, iPay-Per-View kicks off at 8 p.m. Eastern, if my notes are correct. The CZW World Championship will be on the line. The bulldozer himself, Matt Tremont, defends against Black Cheese. These are two, I mean, there are so many rivalries right now in CZW because everyone wants to showcase what they have to bring and what they have to offer. Black Jeans is one of those guys, though, who says, you know what, I am CZW. I'm the guy that helped build this place. I am the guy that, that is this place. Former CZW World Heavyweight Champion Black Jeans, Matt Tremont beat Jeans for that title. And Jeans wants to prove something to everybody. He has something that he feels that he needs to prove to everybody when he walks away with this match. He's the one that wants to have his hand raised high as, high as CZW World Heavyweight Champion. Meanwhile, Matt Tremont... He is, he is really like the new lifeblood of CZW. He is the representation of the fans and the crowd and the passion that goes into combat zone wrestling. He isn't going to go down without a fight. Now, you also, before the iPay-Per-View kicks off, there's actually going to be two matches um, before that. Pre-show match Poseidon and the Sea Friends taking on, um, is it Frankie Picard and the, and the, I can't read it, the type is too small. Take it. The Dub Boys. Thank you. Not a problem. Uh, so for those who saw the entrance of Poseidon on the, on the last event, uh, Poseidon and his sea friends, I'm rolling my eyes, yes, his sea friends will be taking on Frankie Picard and the Dub Boys. Uh, that'll be a very amazing matchup. And I'm seeing a little bit of a misprint on the graphic and on the website because the pre-matches are supposed to start at 7.30, doors open at 7. So I'm a little bit confused and I need to get that fixed. Yeah, I've noticed that too. It's kind of like, okay, we got an hour to play with. But that's why I was like, I figured the pre-show would kick around 7.30 if the doors open at 7. But, you know, it goes. <clears throat> also, one other pre-show match. It's Aaron Williams taking on, and I want to say, Leo Rush. Leo Rush. So, Leo Rush, uh, ha again, he's another one of these guys that's turning a lot of people's heads. And, 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 what's, and again, in the world of professional wrestling, and, and for a company that's at the level of combat zone wrestling, you have to show why you deserve to be there. You have to show that you have earned an opportunity, where you've earned a, a, a spot. And Leo Rush a year ago, you know, tried to knock down the doors of the CZW, and, and, and DJ just wasn't having it. Uh, I, don't, I don't need another guy like him. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And then something clicked in Leo Rush. And I want to say something clicked maybe about three or four months ago. And all of a sudden, he just started to turn everybody's heads. And now, and now the doors to CZW have, have opened wide for Leo Rush. And now, here comes Aaron Williams, who he is no stranger to CCW. He's had an opportunity to showcase what he has to offer. He's also a mainstay at Rockstar Pro Wrestling. And these two now are going to battle it out. And I think this is just going to be such an interesting uh, mixture of styles between these two. I think uh, Leo wants to prove to everybody that he's deserving of a more permanent spot in CCW. And Aaron Williams wants to showcase that you know, he isn't just the random guy that comes in now and again, but he is deserving also of a main event roster spot here at Comments on Wrestling. Now, pay -per -views, the iPay-Per-View is going to start at 8. They can, of course, find everything um, as far as watching it online through streamczw.com, right? 
Yes. And also, and, and for those of you, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, for those of you who aren't aware too, CZW has its own network site, so similar to the WWE network. You can go to CZWstudios.com, pay $9.99 a month, that's right, just nine ninety nine, and you can get footage, uh, access to, I mean, just years of CZW footage, years of women superstars uncensored footage, all for $9.99 a month. Also want to throw this one out there for everybody. Of course, don't forget Dojo Wars also right around the corner from Combat Zone Wrestling. And on Saturday, October the 17th, CZW teams up with the International Wrestling Syndicate for IWS versus CZW at Scratch a Laval, if I hope I have pronounced that correctly, um, up in Laval, Quebec. The Nation of Intoxication versus Vampiro, Green Phantom, and the Hardcore Ninjas. CZW World Tag Team Champions, once again, that is at this time, it's going to be after the event, so anything can happen. The tag team championships will still be there. The tag, the heavyweight champion will still be there. Whether or not they are the same individuals coming out of this Saturday headed for the 17th is a totally different animal. So keep that. Remember, hashtag subject to change without notice. Or hashtag mm-hmm. subject to change with a three count or a tap out. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a long hashtag? Yeah, that, eh, it would be a little bit of a hashtag. Yeah, it's it, it's me. I'm long winded. I can get away with this. So basically, from there, and I'm hoping I pronounce this correctly. Team Tremendous slated to take on Tabernak de Team. I hope I said that. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Except it's Tabernak, right? <laughs> Tabernak de Team. Yeah. There you go. And once again, also you weren't, you weren't too far off. I didn't think. I tried. Not bad for having not having a pronunciation guide in front of me. <laughs> Hashtag wing it. Uh, from there, CZW World Champion, as of this moment, Matt Tremont will defend against PCP Crazy F and Manny. And in a, Absolutely. I'm also, this is going to be fun. This is going to be one to watch also. CZW owner DJ Hyde takes on Shane Hawk. And Chainsaw Joe Gacy slated to take on Excess. Once again, that is Saturday the 17th. As combat zone teams with IWS for IWS versus CZW at Scratch a Laval in Laval, Quebec. Uh, I'm not going to give the street address because there's a pronunciation I'm not sure about, and I've already botched stuff enough tonight. Except the <laughs> font on this one I can read, unlike on the graphic. <laughs> Go to CZWrestling.com. You'll find out all the information about it. Uh, and, and here's the thing. We are building to what's coming December 12th. We are building to Cage of Death. And between here and Cage of Death in December, we have Tangled Web this Saturday. We are appearing at WrestleFest on the 11th. Right. We are appearing, we are, it is IWS versus CZW in Montreal um, on the, or excuse me, Laval, um, on October 17th. November 7th, we're in Dayton. November 14th, we are in, or excuse me, let me apologize. November 21st, we are back in uh, Voorhees, New Jersey. There is a rumor we might be adding one other date, but that's very un- unknown right now. And then we're returning December 12th for Cage of Death. We have a lot of events yeah. between now and December. Um, and a lot of our guys are out there just, you know, killing it to showcase, hey, come watch us and then see what happens at CZW's largest event of the year, Cage of Death. And when I say largest event of the year, I'm not talking about... CZW is not a promotion that, oh, look, we draw 100 people and that's fantastic. This is an event that will draw probably somewhere in the, in the 1,300 to 1,600 person range. This is a spectacle level of event. Um, after this weekend, we will have more things to put out and announce about Cage of Death. So please, you know, if you are there live in person at the event, actually starting on Saturday, you will be able to purchase Cage of Death tickets but you have to be in Voorhees to get your first chance to buy tickets. Yes, we will still have tickets available after this weekend, but this is the one. If you want a front row ticket to Cage of Death, you might want to come this Saturday because this will be your chance to get those tickets at Tangled Web. Um, There's going to be more than just the Cage of Death event itself, and we're going to be talking about that starting next week. Yeah, we're going to be keeping some very serious track, and I will go ahead and let you and DJ both know Save me a seat. I will be there this year. Unless a booking occurs at the last freaking minute. That would be probably. <laughs> what happened? <sighs> it happened last year. 
At this point, considering it's only second Saturday in December, which is normally an off day for me. That's a hint, people. It's going to be an off day. Trust me on this one. <laughs> but from there, like I said, I'm definitely looking forward. I'm going to tr- do my best. I will do everything I possibly can, and I'm marking it on my calendar now. Saturday, December 12, 7.30 p.m., Voorhees, New Jersey, at Flyer Skate Zone, Cage of Death, coming up right around the corner. Holy hell, I can't believe we're already in October. Um, let me go ahead and do this real quick, because I know um, we're going at 17 after the top of the hour right now, on 17 after 10 on the East Coast, 9 on the Central Time Zone. And right now, California, I think the clocks have all melted because of the fire. Um, that was bad, and I apologize. Now, in addition to everything else you've got going on, you're also, let's see, he's doing PR. He works in ring. He works in various other promotions, depending on the circumstance. He runs Heartland and is rebuilding. And you're also the general manager for GSW? For Grand Slam Wrestling, which will be this coming Saturday, October 10th, at the Music Youth Center at 606 Main Street in Music, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I would have messed that one up. I would have messed that one up, and everybody in Pennsylvania is going to look and go, would that asshole please get something right tonight? No, I don't <laughs> have to. It's my show. It I is can... just outside of Scranton, Pennsylvania, if that helps. Oh, ah, very nice. Did not know that. That's actually a city that I'd never heard of, so Music, Pennsylvania, we're good. All right, do me a favor. Tell everybody a little bit about GSW. So Grand Slam Wrestling, this is, for me personally, and, and when, when I was asked to become the general manager, it, felt, it, it made me feel good, and I don't know how to word it any differently. So, uh, you know, as a young guy, when I was really young in, in wrestling, I met a, a, group of, a group of people very interested and very dedicated and had the heart and the passion to get into the world of professional wrestling, and I helped started starting to open up some of those doors for some of them to get into wrestling. And now several several unnumbered years later uh they now have grand slam wrestling and they asked when they reached out and said hey you know what we think you're the one that can pull things to pull everything together for us and showcase and help us showcase what we have to offer we would like for you to be our general manager that made me feel good if that makes any sense and I do like what they have to bring. And yes, it is going to be a little bit more of local guys. But I say local guys. But this is a company that that has featured guys like group events, like uh, group events, like ju- and who just went to Japan um, and just came back from Japan. Um, Kevin Graham, who also just went to Japan. Wild Phoenix, who. Just got a dark match uh, in, in, when WWE was in Baltimore at the beginning of September. It, there are so many people who are making so many waves, and it's a lot of younger talent. And I like that because I think what I like to see, and, and the reason why, like when I talked even about CZW and talked about guys like Leo Rush and and and, and uh, Joey Janela, it's because these guys aren't done growing as talent. These guys are still. Uh, growing and expanding, and they're developing their potential even further. And so you have a company like Grand Slam Wrestling, where our heavyweight champion, uh, Stevie Shields, is really, to me, when I look at the quality of the of the talent on that event, I really think he is somebody that you need to pay attention to. Give him a year, give him two years, and he's going to be that guy that is like, wow, he is the next breakout guy. Um, trained by the Wild Samoans, uh, I mean, and that's when you think about that legacy of the people who have been trained by off of the Wild Samoa, and I mean, and the Samoan family, I should say, because it isn't just off of doing it, it's the, the family. And when you go through um, that system, you become part of the family. Um, and Stevie Shields, to me, it just exemplifies a lot of great characteristics of a quality wrestler that I think you're going to see more and more out of moving forward into the future. And there's so many great talents at, at, at Grand Slam. And yet it's very grounded. It's very connected to its community. There's such a passionate and loyal fan base that has continued to expand every month I come back. There are more and more fans joining in on the fun and excitement and are, who are a part of the event. Now, live event this coming Saturday, October the 10th, in Music, Pennsylvania, it is going to be Zombie Lucha. Do me a favor. Give me the background of the name, please, if you have it on hand. Well, you know, it is the month of October. We are leading into Halloween. And again, this is a very community-oriented and community-connected promotion. 
So there is going to be a children's costume con- contest. Oh, cool. And, you know, what other... We, we wanted to connect to, you know, it is Halloween. This should be fun for everybody. And so we are making it fun. We are making it interactive. Um, and so why would adults be interested in bringing their kids to a wrestling event? Well, guess what? A paying adult can get their kid in for free. And, oh, if you enter the kid's costume contest and they win... We, we are going to give away free tickets to upcoming events. Very nice. Very cool. Love it. Uh, it's going to be located 606 Main Street, bell time, 730 p.m. What time doors open? 630. Okay. Main event, the GSW Heavyweight Championship. The cinema, Stevie Shields defending against the British Wolf. Like I said, I, I mean, I can't, I can't talk about TV Shields more. I mean, he's just such a tremendous talent. And he's going off against an international superstar in the British War. Uh, this is going to be an amazing collision of talent. In a four-way match for the vacant GSW Tag Team Championships, former champions Bo Storm, Bo Nakoda, and international star St- um, Shane Storm take on world-class gentlemen Johnny Moran and Blaze Daniels versus the Falcon Corp, Adam Falcon and Joe Quick versus the Impeccables Kit Cassidy and Keita Murray. So I, as general manager, I put myself out there, and I, I, it's possible I may have made some people angry, and it's possible I may have been knocked unconscious several times in the last couple of months connected to Grand Slam Wrestling. And after last month and all the tag teams just sort of blew up, I stormed the ring after had having recently been again dumped on my noggin, and maybe got a little mad and I sort of took away the tag titles from everybody. Um, so this is going to be a four way tag match for the tag t- tag titles. So they are currently vacant because I pulled them off because I didn't think they could be, I didn't think people were behaving. So when you talk about Bo Nakoda and, and Shane Storm were the most recent tag team champions there, Bo is a little bit of an unknown, but I, Bo is amazing. Bo is one of those guys that if you, if you don't get a chance to come up to Pennsylvania or New York and see, like, he is a standout. And going up against international star Shane Storm, who people may recognize from Chikara, um, this team together are, is phenomenal. World-class gentlemen. Uh, these are, this is a very young, hungry team. Johnny Moran and Blaze Daniels, a uh, very powerful team. But they also, you know, they want to manipulate things for their favor, which is no different than Falcon Corps, Adam Falcon and Joe Quick. Uh, trainees of the Amazing Red. These guys, um, these guys bring an innovative offense that you might not expect when you give them a first glance. But they're also quite very deceptive. They like to turn tables into their favor. And then you have the Impeccables. The Impeccables are young. They're hungry. They're they're willing to showcase what their talent can get them and earn them inside of a wrestling ring. Submission match. International star Matt Turner faces his rival, Maniac Mike Vaughn, to continue their best of series. So these two were former friends. I mean, they are the most winningest uh, uh, tag team champions. I'm I'm totally miswording my grammar right now. Uh, Mike Vaughn, Matt Turner used to be tag partners. They're part of the Diamond City Kings. They have won the GSW tag team titles the most of, of any team. And after their last victory in a, in a gauntlet series match, Matt Turner turns on Mike Vaughn. And Matt Turner, just without, just, just, I don't even know. Matt Turner is just on a different level right now. Uh, wanted to strike off on his own, wanted to break off and showcase, you know, that he is better than everybody. And started this, this best of series. Well, the ruling of the best of series is whoever wins uh, one of the matches in the series gets to pick the stipulations of the next match. Matt Turner, a Ring of Honor Academy graduate, a CM Punk trainee, he decided after winning his last match through a whole series of turns of shenanigans, decided, you know, guess what? I'm a submission expert. So guess what, Mike Vaughn? It's me and you in a submission match. Nice. Hashtag Young Hustle member Clayton Drasher takes on AJ Evers. You should, you should see the look of my face. <laughs> young Hustle, and the next three matches that I know you're going to talk about all involve Young Hustle. Young Hustle, I mean, I don't have hair left to pull out. 
young hustle drive me nuts. And, and when I talk about the, the number of times the last few months that I've been knocked out, Matt Turner was one of those guys, by the way. Uh, young hustle, they also rank high on my list of somebody who jumped me from behind and knocked me unconscious. I, 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 I wouldn't put it past them. And, you know, maybe because they pissed me off and I, I suspended them for two months. Uh, so all three of them now want to show, guess what? We're deserving of more opportunities. We're deserving of more gold. And they have shown that, you know what? Maybe they could, but they always resort to dirty tactics, which will hurt them in the end. Clayton Drasher is also the holder of the Keystone Cup uh, that he won uh, several months ago that gives him an opportunity to buy for a title shot at any time of his choosing. And so you never know when he's going to cash it in, but he's going to showcase himself against A.J. Evers. A.J. Evers is a guy who very recently, uh, you know, he went down that whole dark path of, like, I have to show everybody that I'm better than everybody. And then Sid realized the error of his ways. He still thinks he has a little bit of a, of a chip on his shoulder, a little bit more to prove. But against Clayton Drasher, who has been established, who has won the GFW Heavyweight Championship before, you know, he is, is willing to showcase, I'm, I'm deserving of that main event spot and not AJ ever. So I think this is going to be a, an intense battle. Speaking of young hustle, Mark Maverick looking to break the winning streak of Wild Phoenix. So Mark Maverick is like the, the Krillin that never grew up. He is, he is the mighty midget, um, and I'm okay saying that, but he's also going against Wild Phoenix. Uh, who is also a mighty midget. I'm sorry. I, can't, I couldn't resist it. I, I'm taller than both of them, and that doesn't happen much in, in professional wrestling. Uh, Maverick is a powerhouse um, and, and will just devastate his competition, but Wild Phoenix is no, no slouch. And under that mask, you don't know who you're up against. And like I said, he recently had a WWE tryout. So this is a guy that people are watching. And he's also a guy who's had a winning streak as of recent uh, with Grand Slam Wrestling. And really, I think, other than his debut appearance at GSW, has won every single match that he's, that he's, that he's had um, in, I guess, maybe the last year. Young Hustle member Sean Andrews versus Bones in a triple threat match versus Andy, Le- Andy Lee Ray. <laughs> Sorry, I... So this is the return... Oh, no problem. Here's your perfect storm. I was keeping track of what you were saying, getting ready to read the next one. I had a Skype message go off, an email go off, a foot man, my phone started ringing. It's like mute, kill, kill, kill. <laughs> Continue, my please. Brain is just having, having this image of you with, like, I don't know, a pumpkin in front of you and a knife going, kill, kill, kill. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, this is, this, again, this is going to be in a, uh, a very intense matchup. I think Bones may not know what he's walking in for. He's, he's a very younger guy. He's willing to show what he has to bring. Andy Lee Ray is, is a local favorite. He hasn't been with uh, Grand Slam in a, in, a, in a little bit. So he's making his return against one of the most hated people in Grand Slam wrestling, Sean Andrews. So all three guys have something to prove. Uh, the crowd wants to see what these three guys are going to bring, and they are going to bring it. Grand Slam wrestling return. I had my I had it piped in. I was actually going to play the commercial during the break. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Thank you. Except I forgot to mute the channel. Damn. <laughs> and also Tyro, Tyrone Kid taking on Dante Draconis. I mean, again, these are two young and hungry guys who are both uh, local to the to the music area. I think both of them want to show that they have what it what it takes to break out in Grand Slam wrestling. Now, tickets for the event are? They are $10. Uh, kids 12 and under are free with a paying adult. Um, you can go ahead and reserve tickets now at 570-266-8112. Um, and make sure you follow us online. You visit our website at gswrestling.com or on facebook.com slash Grand Slam Wrestling PA or on Twitter at GS Wrestling. Doors are going to open at 6.30 p.m. real quick. Now, let me go ahead and lay this one out there. You've got so much going on. You know, do you think you're due for another vacation before you get dumped on your head again? If I get dumped on my head again, I may I may be in need of a medical vacation. Um, it, it's funny, and I mean, realistically, outside of the world of professional wrestling, I have another 40-hour-a-week-plus job. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> and I have a... 
and I have the whole acting side of my life, and I have a couple other side hustles. Uh, so I, I'm already like, it was so funny being being back at the 40 hour a week job and, and today and just being like, I'm very happy about things, but also feeling like, oh, wow, I'm right back in the rut of, of everything that's been going on. And I have this whole new perspective now on a couple of things that I, now that I've been able to step away and sort of recharge and like go back at it. And my boss today looked at me like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, oh, I just, I actually got some rest and I have some energy. And it's like, oh, and she kept doing one of these, like, she looks at me at the side of her eye, like, gives me a side way glance and then goes back to what she's doing. And then looks at me again, like, oh, because I'm not that person that will rest. I, I do not rest well. No. Um, and, and, and I have, you know, I have, instead of just trying to grow one tree, I'm growing 12 at the same time in, in 10 different states. So, I keep things moving because that's how you just have to survive. And uh, you hear a lot about people uh, from people like uh, I listen to a lot of like a lot of different podcasts, a lot of different podcasts. And if you ever hear the Nervous Podcast with with Chris Hardwick, he talks about you know the ability to build your own thing because then you you start to own it, you start to put yourself out there, and then it's very much your lifeblood that is out there, not other people that you just happen to be a part of. Right. Um, you hear Paul Cabana talk about it on, on the Art of Wrestling podcast and talk about you have to put yourself out there in ways that are different and innovative and make you feel like you're expanding the creative side of your life. And I'm having, and I'm having some of those moments too, I mean, between building HWA, between being the, the general manager um, for Grand Slam Wrestling, for designing um, the, the production team and the media, so media team for, for CZW. I mean, all, all three of those hit up creativity in a, in a different way. And like I said, the acting side of my life, my, 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 40 hour plus week a week job um which by the way i'm looking for another job so if you know anybody's interested in hiring hey <laughs> look me up um hey i'm a dirty dirty shield it's what i do um and i'm okay with that because you just you have to keep moving you have to keep doing new things you have to be innovative because the second you stop you dry out you become stale and why does anybody want to watch a piece of stale toast I will actually. I actually. Get, I actually get questions whenever you come on. Normally, the day um for a couple of days afterwards from different people. Are you sure you and Stamper aren't related? <laughs> because I have a forty-hour week gig. I work with. Um, I'm now working with Peach State Wrestling Alliance. My home promotion is Global Championship Wrestling. I still do stuff with IWA Deep South and LXW. I also um run Full Range Entertainment. Do karaoke, um, wedding receptions, birthday parties, all of the above. Plus, on top of that, run social media for a couple of different companies. So it's like overworked, yes. Feet to the fire, yes. Underpaid, damn straight. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and I'm the crazy person because, you know, this, like, I, like I said before, this is the month of October. This is the month that's leading into Halloween. And I am the crazy Halloween person. And, oh, yeah, Halloween's on a Saturday. Oh, yes, I am it the is. one that's pl- planning, like, a some kind of day-long event for my neighborhood. I have no idea what I'm completely doing yet. But I have lights. I have decorations. I have laser lights. I have fog machines. I have craziness that's going to happen in my front yard that that I have three weeks to put together. I'm formulating what those plans and what things are going to look like. I have live music. I have reading. I have things that I'm putting together because again, it's it's about putting yourself out there and it's about that element of creativity. So you just don't dry out. You have to keep yourself active. Exactly. And on top of that, Halloween, speaking of Halloween, I'm actually getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning to hit the road to make a, about a 50-minute drive to where I can set up two sound systems for a live event that is a musical event that's going on that day. And then, nice. Yeah, I know. And it's going to run all the way to 4 o'clock, which is going to give me an hour to tear down. I almost double booked myself. Legit. And from there, it's kind of like, I'm not going to be able to do the other one. So I turned it over to a business ally and it's like, I'm going to come back to the house. I'm going to put on probably a plaid sheet, a really bad Scottish accent and chase kids up and down the block with a golf club. There you go. You old kids stay out of my yard. <laughs> feed it, feed it. Okay. <laughs> just Because the, the other crazy side of, of things that I'm doing, you know, I just, I just can't help myself. Uh, I, I am doing some some uh, work inside of my house, and I am hoping by the time Halloween rolls around that I will have finished um, building in my house an audio studio. Nice. Uh, and and to be honest, I want it done by Halloween so I can therefore use the audio studio to then see what I'm going to be doing. 
uh, for the local community in my front yard. Um, be, I just I, I'm at that level just because I, I feel like you have to keep doing something. You always do, um, and just and just be out there. So, and I would have fun too. I mean, I, like I said at the start of the start of our conversation, I went to Florida. I went to Universal Studios. I drove down because I wanted the experience of driving down. Right. Uh, I wanted I wanted to take my car. I wanted to drive through Orlando and see what else was there beyond Universal, beyond Disney, and and just had a blast and, and on Thursday I met up with with uh, it was funny because I went down and I knew I was I didn't I didn't put on blast but I went down there and I met with an old friend of mine I met with Andy Callahan I met with uh, Jessica Havoc I, and other people who I who I had never met before all sort of came out I didn't know real I, I knew that they were down there but I didn't think about meeting up with them uh, but met up with Rich Swan and Athena and you know all these other people that I knew and at the end of the night there were 11 of us going through haunted houses together nice because it was just fun and we could step outside of ourselves we could step outside of our you know quote unquote real life craziness or quote unquote wrestling craziness and just have to hang out together and have a blast and it was just that it was a blast it was fun and by the way if you're going to Universal make sure you check out Bill and Ted's excellent Halloween adventure all I have to say <laughs> is when I first I went down in 2007 and I saw Bill and Ted face the League of Evil Divas uh, Nicole Richie Paris Hilton and Britney Spears it was crazy Britney Spears she shaved off her head and put, put up her finger in the air and shout crazy it was, I mean it was great it was great Hilarious. this year is to rival that year because this year it's Bill and Ted versus Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. No, they could have made it better. Kanye West and Taylor Swiftler. Oh, there was an appearance from Taylor. Don't worry. She interrupted Kanye? No. No. So, in past years, Bill and Ted actually inadvertently killed Taylor Swift off because, because she became a demon-possessed... Uh, uh, we said that about her while she was in country. Uh, <laughs> We said that about we we said that about Taylor demon possessed. We said that about Swiftler while she was still in country. Yeah, <laughs> because she can do everything. <laughs> no, she she can't get me to voluntarily spend money on her music. Guess what? That's one trick even she can't do. Do me a favor. A trick. How can first off? How can everybody keep track of what's going on with Phil Stamper? So make sure you follow me on Twitter at ps phenom. Uh, and on Instagram at P.S. Phenom. That's P-S-P-H-E-N-O-M. Uh, you can also check out on Facebook from the desk of Nate Simon. So it talks about all the things that I'm, that I'm going to, all the press releases I'm putting out. Also, the indie wrestling calendar. And I know that's going out on a number of websites, CP, Pro Wrestling Mania, um, OneWrestling.com. Um, but primarily, you can, put, you can find everything that, that I'm putting out there or Nate Simon's putting out there or Phil Stamper's putting out there, whichever way you know me at go to facebook.com slash desk of Nate sign or look at look up from the desk of Nate sign. Now also, how can people find out about grand slam wrestling? You can follow us on Twitter at G S wrestling, or you can go to Facebook at facebook.com slash grand slam wrestling PA. And also your other project combat zone. You can follow combat zone on Twitter and Instagram at combat zone. You can also follow us on Facebook at official CVW uh, and of course, CZWrestling.com. Always a pleasure to have you on. It's always a treat. And I always appreciate it. And I thank you for bringing me on. Thank you folks. Hang with us. As always, I get to say it like this. The Phenom Phil Stamper has just gone beyond ringside. Hang with us. Back to basics continues right after this. will actually work the first time I what's up everybody this is Jimmy Rave and you're listening to the only Jimmy Rave approved radio show you're locked in to be on ringside when planning your next party or special event insist on the best Full Range Entertainment is a professional entertainment company providing a full range of services. From professional disc jockeys and MCs to catering and photography, when the details of your special day must be perfect, call us first. Wedding receptions, corporate parties, school functions, birthday celebrations, and more. We also have Birmingham's largest selection of karaoke tracks available. With over 40 years combined experience, Full Range Entertainment can provide you with the talent and professionalism you need and deserve to make your next event one you'll never forget. For more information on the full range of services we offer, call 533-HITS, that's 533-H-I-T-S, or check us out on our website at fullrangeentertainment.com. 
This is Danny Cage from the World Famous Monster Factory, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bill Barons, and you're watching, you're listening, you're experiencing Beyond Ringside, and you are a better person for it. Trust me. This is Harley Race, eight times NWA World's Heavyweight Champion, first ever King of the Ring, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. Howdy, friends. This is the Magic City Motormouth, Fast Eddie Lane, with your invitation to join yours truly, along with Mark Mabo Bowman and the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, every Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific, for Beyond Ringside Live. Wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports talk, and a whole lot more. Keep your eyes open on beyondringside.com for all the upcoming show information, and of course, catch us on social media as well. Until then, we'll see you this Sunday, 6.30 Eastern, for Beyond Ringside Ringside Live on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. Hi, this is April Hunter from AprilHunter.com, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. 2010, after two years of constant bullying, 11-year-old Ty Smalley took his own life. In the past seven years, more than 55,000 children have taken their own lives due to bullying. That's 22 youth suicides every day. Stand for the Silent is a grassroots organization that educates people about the harsh reality of bullying and the devastation it causes, and they need your help. Visit StandForTheSilent.org to learn how you can get involved and help us to save lives. I stand for the silent. 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 I'm Roddy Piper, and we stand for the silent. Fifteen before the top of the 11 o'clock hour on the East Coast. It would be 9.46 my time, (laughs) because I can Back to Basics continues. Once again, everything on the table, nothing off the record. The 10 count is on in more ways than one. I will elaborate a little bit more on that as time progresses. want to remind everybody real quick, tomorrow, October the 7th, the To Be Determined show returns live at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central. The Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, Angie Nemesis, the Grand Design, Clyde Braddock, and yours truly. And this coming Saturday, which is October 10th, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. Beyond Ringside Saturday Showcase, the Shooter's Gallery is open. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Yours truly, Shane Knowles and the Cause back in the saddle this coming Saturday. Possibly a three-man team. You never know what's going to happen. And thank you to everybody who's been giving all the great feedback about Saturday Showcase. Greatly appreciate it. But I will let you know, there will be some more returning family members on Saturday Showcase in the very near future. Don't blink. Like to welcome in good friend of the family, broadcast colleague, and co-host of Wrestle Rage Radio with Smart Rage and Stan. He is Stan Grubb, the talented half. What's going on, brother? What's going on, sir? Always nice to be a part of a highlight reel, so to speak, in the Back to Basics show. I enjoy every time joining you, man. I always have a good time talking to you. Good to hear uh, Phil Stamper talking about, gosh, he's got so much going on. I don't know how that man finds time for vacation, much less breathing. I mean, jeez. Yeah, it was. It's actually um, keeping. A lot of people have trouble keeping track with me. A lot of pe- have people have trouble keeping track with him. That's why it's always we've always got something going on for us to actually have an off day. People sit back and go, "Are you sure the two of you aren't related somehow?" We're not that I know of. But what else has been going on, dude? Missed you Sunday. I know you've been. Uh, I know you've been dealing with inner circle situations. And uh, you know the normal normal routine when it comes to that. <clears throat> and of course, as everybody knows me, realizes the fact that I always use the phrase, and I mean it. Family does come first. Oh, you know, I mean, I I appreciate that. One of the things that um, I've really tried to maintain a focus on since Wrestle Rage came back was just making sure that I put my family first. Um, I'm not always very good at that, and uh, there's plenty of people that would tell you. <laughs> there's probably a laundry list out there, um, but. <laughs> I, I enjoy greatly just sitting down and talking about the business that I love so much, and that's professional wrestling. Um, I think that 
it's harder as we get older and as we have more kids, <laughs> so to speak, because you try to juggle. Um, I'm fortunate because, at least for the time being, um, my evenings are pretty much, uh, well, not interfered with. Unfortunately, Sundays are one of those days, well, not really unfortunately, luckily for me, Sundays are one of those days where I can spend uh, a pretty good amount of time with my kids and I don't really put a time limit to it, so sometimes it's late, sometimes it's early. When it's early, I try to make myself available. As a matter of fact, um, I was actually thinking I would have the time this past Sunday, and honestly, when my kids ask me to lay down and hang out with them while they're going to bed, I'm good with that. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's, that's just how I am. That's, as, as Christian would say, that's how I roll. Oh, you went there. Yes, sir. Question, did you get a chance to catch the Madison Square Garden show Saturday on the network? I did. I watched both the Madison Gar- Square Garden show. I can't wait for TakeOver this week uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact. And I watched Raw. The first thing that the Madison Square Garden show really impressed me with was they didn't try to dress it up. They just did a Madison Square Garden show that they just happened to have TV cameras for. It wasn't an overwhelming sense of pay-per-view feel, and I'm okay with that. I think there's a lot of fans out there that are spoiled by what WWE does, and I saw a lot of complaints on Twitter. Of course, it's Twitter. Why wouldn't there be complaints? Not just Twitter, though, on Facebook, too, about how people just felt, I don't know, I guess they felt cheated because there weren't major title changes or things like that. Folks, this is still a house show, (laughs) and we all know that it's very, very rare that a title change is going to take place on a house show. And when it does, they would have made a bigger to-do of it. Um, Every storyline that they have going on right now, with the exception of the Divas Revolution, which is just mind-boggling, was furthered and progressed on Saturday into Monday. So I wasn't very disappointed at all. I've got to sit back and say this. They did a stellar job from start to finish the match order was good leading off the way they did with the tag team match of Sheamus and Rusev, Randy Orton and Dolph Ziggler. You know, it that could have gone any one of a number of different ways, and I mean that in good ways and in not so good ways. But I think that they started it out the way they should have. Um, I just, the way that I'm looking at the overall situation with all four of those individuals, there are so many different ways that they can take their characters too. As not to mention storylines in place, I just I think it's absolutely stellar the fact that they're willing to take the chance and check egos at the door and put these four on first. Yeah, I mean WWE has always been very good about explaining to their talent the benefit of starting a show off hot, and with that tag match, even though it seemed a little bit what's the word what's the word thrown together, yeah. It wasn't bad. I mean, all four people had a story that you could relate to. All four people involved, um, people wanted to see. Anytime you put Dolph Ziggler at the beginning of a show, nothing wrong with that. He knows how to get the crowd involved. Um, I'm still, at this very moment, not sold on Rusev. I don't think I ever will be sold on the old Ruru, if you will. Yeah, I know. I heard Summer Rae make that reference last night and proceeded to actually vomit in my mouth. It's just a simple case of there are some things that should never be said on television. And for her to call Alexander Rusev, Ruru, <laughs> bad, just horrible. I mean, it's like, no, that's that's something a 16-year-old would say. It's not just something a 16-year-old would say. I mean, Summer Rae is already awful. I mean, she's just awful. They have nothing to do with her right now. So they're saying, okay, well, you'll be Lana 2.0. Here's the problem. Yeah. Lana has talent uh, <clears throat> in a lot of different ways and a lot of more appealing features. Um, yeah, not so much for Summer Rae. And, and it's, the sad thing is this. Summer Rae, I'm sure, has a lot to offer, and she's still very, very young in her career. True. So, so there's plenty of time for her to continue to improve and to grow and to go forward. So I don't really mean it as a put-down to her, even though I know it sounds like that. But the truth of the matter is, right now she's a placeholder for Lana. And it's unfortunate, but at least she's on television yes. for her benefit, not necessarily for ours, because Rusev is very unmotivated right now. He's just every single week getting worse by the week. He's not a bad performer, so you need to be clear with that. I mean, this is a guy that can go, but the angle is, is done. 
the gimmick of being an anti-American is very, very overdone. And I think today's fan is really tired of seeing that because, first off, they killed his his momentum way before Cena ever beat him. I mean, the fact that he was doing count-out losses when he shouldn't have having shouldn't have been having those, um, the fact that Big E took him to the limit and still didn't go over makes no sense to me. Way back when they were first building this guy, right? Um, these there's so many mistakes that happen along the way. You want to build a monster and you want to make him believable, so you can't put him in the ring with people that should beat him. That's my thought process. Big E at that time had the most momentum going into that match, should have won. That should have been the end of Rusev. Rusev should have gone back to NXT to rebuild. Instead, they pushed him continuously. They had him go over a lackluster Jack Swagger, a very tired and bored Big Show. I don't care what he says. His work tells the story. Mark Henry, who unfortunately in this stage of his career just doesn't have a whole lot more to offer. It's not his fault that he's been beat up so much. It's just the way a career shakes out. Um, Ryback. Why would they put him in a feud like that? Made no sense to me. You continuously go down the line, and then when you get to Cena, there wasn't a question if Cena was going to beat him or not. And it wasn't his fault, and it wasn't Cena's fault. It just was the way that the story goes. Way too late. Way too late. So now, when he's in this feud with Ziggler about Lana, who, by the way, is gone, and Ziggler, who can apparently ignore the fact that he apparently cheated on Lana, which... You know, in the storyline, when we talk about continuity, it's almost it's almost a detriment to be a comic book fan because comic books have this way of wrapping everything up and connecting it all. Yeah, not so much with WWE, so it drives me nuts. Not quite as bad as how TNA tends to handle their business, or lack thereof. But still, there's so much to be desired for those guys. Um, Rusev, what do you do with him? What do you do with him? At this point, he's bored. You know, he's not motivated. He's not putting his best foot forward. He fought Ziggler so many times, it's almost as bad as watching Randy Orton and John Cena. Hey, almost. Do me a big favor. Can you hang tight for one second? I need, um, I'm going to take the top of the hour break just a touch early. Sure. Folks, do me a favor. Hang with us. We are going to take the top of the hour break just a little bit early, and we'll be back on Back to Basics when right after this. When planning your next party or special event, insist on the best. Full Range Entertainment is a professional entertainment company providing a full range of services. From professional disc jockeys and MCs to catering and photography, when the details of your special day must be perfect, call us first. Wedding receptions, corporate parties, school functions, birthday celebrations, and more. We also have Birmingham's largest selection of karaoke tracks available. With over 40 years combined experience, Full Range Entertainment can provide you with the talent and professionalism you need and deserve to make your next event one you'll never forget. For more information on the full range of services we offer, call 533-HITS, that's 533-H-I-T-S, or check us out on our website at fullrangeentertainment.com. Hey, this is Stan Grubb for WrestleRage Radio right here on beyondringside.com. Join us every Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for myself and Smart Rage as we discuss the professional wrestling business from WWE, TNA, and all things in between. We'll have an interview here or there. We'll see what we can do to just keep you entertained. And along the way, we're going to have to bring up some emotion and make you think. That's what we like to do. So join us here on Sunday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'll see you at WrestleRage. Sunday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern here on BeyondRingside.com. Join us for the Midnight Black Mass. Myself, the Reverend Dan Wilson, brings you the dark gospel of professional wrestling. Uncensored, unedited, uncut, and not for the faint of heart. You can find out more about us at youtube.com slash pottyhumor or subscribe at Potty Humor on iTunes and Stitcher today. Howdy friends, this is the Magic City Motormouth Fast Eddie Lane with your invitation to join yours truly along with Mark Mabo Bowman and the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis every Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 
3.30 p.m. Pacific for Beyond Ringside Live. Wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports talk, and a whole lot more. Keep your eyes open on beyondringside.com for all of upcoming show information. And, of course, catch us on social media as well. Until then, we'll see you this Sunday, 6.30 Eastern for Beyond Ringside Live on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. And this is Kenny Kip Kennedy, Master of Kenny's Kempo Karate. Hier spricht Tassel der Jungen von Meister Extreme Wrestling. This is the Dark Child Chance Trump of the NWA National Heavyweight Champion. This is the Temptation Sean Tempers. This is Jacoby Boykins, a.k.a. the Alabama Ambassador, Mr. 256. This is the Bees Knees, the Cat Pajamas, and the whole shebang. Johnny Gargano. This is Bill Barons, and you're watching, you're listening, you're experiencing Beyond Rankside. And you are a better person for it. Trust me. On a Topsy Turvy Tuesday. Some people can call it a hashtag takedown Tuesday. I'm trying to think, what would be the good one for Monday? Well, we don't do a show on Monday. Although there is one coming up on Fridays in the very near future. Good God help us all. That's all I'm going to say. Seriously. Welcome back into Beyond Ringside Back to Basics. The 10 count is on. Fast Study Lane live from Studio One. Welcoming in tag team partner this time around, Stan Grubb. What's up, brother? Not a whole lot, brother. Just enjoying these wonderful sounds and melodies of professional wrestling. You know, it's been a, it, this past weekend was actually a really good one all the way across the board. And, of course, you've got NXT TakeOver tomorrow night. Looking forward to that one. The 30-minute match between Bailey and Sasha. And before we dive back into the Madison Square Garden show, I do want to come back over. And I'm going to revisit something I said during Seg 1. And it's something that I said on social media that's been getting me a lot of crap from all the Bella heads. Is there such a thing? I don't know. I think we just came up with something, and Edge is going to kill me because he had Edge heads. Can we call them Bella Bums? Yeah, Bella Bums would be a really good one. You'll get hate mail for that one. <laughs> cool. You can send all my hate mail to smartrage at gmail.com. That works for me, too. <laughs> yeah, really. That's the new email address for hate mail. <laughs> normally i just tell he doesn't every, mind he loves that stuff normally i just tell everybody to send it to 1600 pennsylvania avenue washington dc because they will never get read because somebody's got a 4 30 tea time <laughs> <laughs> hey you know what he's he's lame duck man he's on his way out and we then we're gonna get some other other idiot in there two who words, can't do the job two words martial law it'll happen october 2016 before the election that's all i'm gonna say it's gonna happen it'll happen It'll happen, and then some other idiot will think that they've got the next best thing to slice bread or peanut butter. And psh, Politics is for the weak, man. I, I think people that debate politics need to be put in a rubber room because they're just driving themselves insane. I've been one, but there's not much of a bounce to it. <laughs> well, you need a better jacket. That's what it is. No, they just need better. They, they need to go and just put the ropes in the rubber room. That way I can actually run the ropes and stay in shape. Sweet. Yeah, that'd be a beautiful thing. You ever wonder if Raven would have had ropes in the rubber room with the straight jacket that he wore? I think Raven probably would run the ropes whether they were there or not. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, now he might just kind of walk the ropes. Probably. <laughs> probably. That poor guy's been through so much abuse. I mean, <clears throat> God, he scares me. I, I hope that he's, he's able to uh, last a little bit longer and eventually break through as an agent because you talk about a mind for the business. Uh, Raven, Scott Levy, however you want to refer to him. One of the most brilliant people in professional wrestling. You know, I actually had to sit back and smirk at something that I saw on social media, segueing for a second. Um, mm -hmm. we talk, And with everything happening on social media, I love the factor of how CM Punk weighed in about how he feels that Komen is a... Um, what's Scam. The word? Yeah, there you and go. And he's not wrong. And, and this is the thing. People want to think that he's just trying to attack WWE. He really wasn't. WWE's doing a good thing, and he knows that. He was part of that. Yeah. He's not stupid, but he also does the research. I mean, CM Punk's a very smart individual. Yes. That's why he's won his lawsuits. That's why he was able to get out of his contract. That's why he's even able to go to UFC. The man knows what he's doing. So right. for wrestling fans to see what he says and they go, oh, he's just a bitter ex-wrestler, that's just not the case. I mean – Say what you want. Maybe you got your own feelings about how it, how his departure was handled. I know I do. I know Corey does. But the truth of the matter is CM Punk 
eventually, when he comes back, and let's face it, they all come back. Goldberg even said, be a cold day in hell. And he came back. So, you know, sorry. I don't buy into the whole I'm done forever routine. It just doesn't work. But the bottom line is, I mean, he's right. The Komen Foundation has so many controversial issues going on. It's difficult to put 100% support behind a company that you can't trust with your money. Now, I've got to sit back and say, like I say, with, with Brooks coming out and, or with CM Punk coming out and saying that, he has opened himself up as a huge target, especially for those who are too lazy to go and do the research. Um, there, when the post was copied and screenshotted or screenshotted and copied over on Facebook and it started a major discussion in the international wrestling fan base group over on Facebook. And mm -hmm. there were people who were actually putting up the open financial statements for a number of organizations. Um, I'm trying to remember the one that got the most, um, the ALS. Mm -hmm. And somebody was putting up those, and the per another person came back and said, look, I work for ALS, and they started putting up their own counter graphs. And, right. You know, but I'm also one who will sit back and say the following phrase, numbers don't lie unless they're wrong to begin with. Oh, well, you, anybody can cook the books. Yeah. We, we live in a world where crime ran runs rampant. True. We even have cops out there that are killing innocent people. I mean, you can't have it both ways. The world is an evil place. There are people out there that just do bad stuff, including corporate bigwigs. The er, the world itself is a neutral place. It is those that inhabit that cor that corrupt. Hmm. Mm, that's a good debate. Thank you, because my desk in and of itself is an innocent party. The four computers that are on my desk are innocent. It's where I aim those computers that is either good or bad. Wow. So you're finally admitting to porn, huh? No. Fox Corey News. finally gave you his links. <laughs> Foxnews.com. <laughs> oh, that's just as bad. I know it. Look. You talk about bitter. You want to talk about bitter people? Fox News right there. Well, look, I'm going to sit back and say this. There is one reason why I watch Fox News on the weekend, and her name is Judge Janine Pirro. Who? This woman is a badass. Okay. If you ever get a chance to listen or watch her, listen to or watch her. I guarantee you, you will be entertained and very strong, possibly enlightened. Um, Woods does, I mean, P um, Piro does not hold anything back. And I like the way that she does things. Plain and simple. I like people that don't dress stuff up and that are not afraid to take aim and fire. Kind of like a match that I watched Saturday at, on the way back. See, we were actually, <laughs> as uh, Schmidtke, Cosper, Cosper and I are driving back from Peach State. After dinner, we are watch. I've got my tablet linked in through my portable Wi-Fi, and we're watching the network um, MSG special. So it's like chilling while driving, and we're in the right-hand lane, driving five miles below the speed limit while the show is on. So we're not endangering anybody, except yourselves. Are you crazy? <laughs> Trust me, it's cool. We did well, and that also at that time of the morning there weren't that many cars out there so we were kosher if anything was happening i dropped the tablet and let whatever happened happen but the the chris jericho kevin owens match first off match of the night second off pay-per-view quality i wasn't a huge fan of the thumb to the eye win but by the same token it's something that solidifies Kevin Owens beyond any shadow of a doubt in the role of a heel and Jericho in the role of the, of the fan favorite. It may have been a touch more than it needed to be because when you're on the fly doing stuff like that, you have to be real careful if you're coming near the eyes. Kind of like this, um, kind of like a match that was on Ring of Honor television this past weekend that'll, um, they, that'll air on Destination America tomorrow. Where from the um the ROH show they did at MCU Field, um Field of Honor, <laughs> duh, and it was <laughs> okay. the it was the Briscoe Field of Dreams. No, I mean Honor Field of Honor actually is what it was called. It was the uh, Briscoe Brothers in a tag team match against the Time Splitters, and Alex nice. Shelley had a tooth broken. Ooh, yeah, ow. <laughs> 
That ain't no good. No, not good. I hope they. I hope they're able to give him. Hopefully, able to crown it, repair it, or something like that. You hate to see something happen. Like the match itself was stellar, mm-hmm. and like I said, you knew when Shelley took the shot to the face because the tooth went flying, and there was no substitute. There, there's no way they could have done a prosthetic or a fake one on that. It legit tooth broke. It went flying. Um, yeah. yeah, but other than that, I mean, it's like, I wish I could have been at MCU field to watch this match live because you and I both agree. I mean, we all agree here on the station, television, pay-per-view, great and wonderful. There is nothing like making it out to see these shows live. Oh no. I mean, live events is where it's at. It doesn't matter if it's a house show or televised. If you're there live, it's a completely different show. Yeah, and the thing about the Madison Square Garden show, with the exception of the fact that they're going to take their little breaks for their up promos and their commercials and all the other stuff, because, look, you got to make money. Understand that. And you can't always just put banners around the ringside area and hope they get caught on camera. You gotta- yeah, but at the same time, they do, they do their intermissions and breaks between matches at house shows where they announce upcoming events. They show their videos. They do that at the house shows anyway. Yeah, they do. It's- so, I mean, it's uh, the fact that it was on the big screen rather than, uh, you know, while you're sitting there barely paying attention. Right. Eh, you know, it just is what it is. If it gets one more subscriber or one more person to tell a friend, uh, you know, no harm, no foul. Well, see, and we don't get paid by the WWE or their network for doing any kind of positive or ne- um, for any kind of positive mentions about it. But I'm going to sit back and say this. Shows like the Madison Square Garden show make me happy that I actually spend the 10 bucks a month. Shows like NXT, I'm happy that I spend the 10 bucks a month. I mean, because you get a chance to see something a little bit different than the typical Monday thir- Monday or Thursday shows and the typical pay-per-views. Because you said it perfectly, the Madison Square Garden show was like a modified house show, and, right. which is a beautiful thing. If you get a chance, to, people, if you get a chance to catch WWE when they come to your area on a night other than Monday and Tuesday, go, for the love of God, go. The atmosphere is different, the chemistry is different, and it lends itself to a little bit more of an intimate atmosphere rather than it, um, rather than during a TV event. Uh, I mean, the most fun you can have is when you go to a WWE house show. Well, any house show, really, but WWE knows how to do it, and their talent lets it all hang out. I mean, that's the best part. You, when you go to a Raw, when you go to a SmackDown or a pay-per-view... You don't necessarily get to interact with them as much as you would like. It's it's almost impossible because usually the audience is too big, so they can't really focus on the individual. And because it's on television, they've got to focus more on the hard camera. Right. With a house show, with a show like the MSG show, you can interact. You can distract Wade Barrett if you want. I mean, there's all sorts of fun things that you can do. I mean, the most fun I've ever had was getting Wade Barrett to stop mid-promo and give us the queen's wave back to me and my buddies <laughs> and that's the best yeah, that's the best it can get period i don't care is. who you are i mean that's one of the reasons why when i get a chance to get on um get phil on the show and we're talking about everything from uh, grand slam wrestling to WrestleFest, which is coming up uh, matter of fact this sunday um would love to be there for this because folks the south jersey i'm, I'm gonna segue for a hot second the south jersey wrestle fest this sunday October the 11th, Woodbury Heights, New Jersey, at the Woodbury Heights Community Center. You get a chance to catch from Rockstar Pro Wrestling, their showcase match, the White Trash Messiah, Ron Mathis, taking on Nate Wings. From CTW Wrestling, their showcase match, Rude Boy Riley taking on Kyle the Beast. From Dog D-A-W-G, Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators, for their heavyweight championship, Dirty Money defends against A.R. Fox. <laughs> that is going to be a don't blink match and then some. American Championship Entertainment. Pro Wrestling. T.J. Marconi will be defending. Mm, yeah. Um, the ACE Championship against Astro Morales. Hey, is T.J. Marconi related to Lou Marconi? I don't know that. We need to, we need to ask that question and find that out. That's interesting. The New York Wrestling Connection will be featuring a tag team showcase match. Stockade and Chainsaw Joe Gacy taking on Flawless and Lawless. We're going to find out. What? Yeah, I know. <laughs> what kind of name? Flawless and Lawless. <laughs> Trust me. Have you, I've said that five times fast. <laughs> there you go. Um, I'll get you a little bit more information on Flawless and Lawless very soon. Uh, from there, on Point Wrestling, 
will have in non-title action their champion, Joey Janela, taking on Drew Blood. Interspecies Wrestling Showcase. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> we'll have, interspecies? This you've never heard dangerous. of this? You've never heard of Interspecies Wrestling? I mean, I know that there's people out there that do it and go to jail. No, 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 that not that, not that, not that. <laughs> it's kind of like a hybrid of Chikara, Kaiju Big Battle, and Crack. Um, I'm, just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I know, because actually we have people from that company who listen to be on Ringside Radio, and it's like, thank you, first off. And I'm sure they're all hopefully laughing at what I just said. Interspecies is a different breed of wrestling, legitimately and realistically. Um, no they, pun intended. No pun intended. Um, they have their other title. In addition to the ISW championship, they have what it's legit called their other title, the ISW other. Um, Pinky Sanchez will be taking on Fluffy in this match. And trust, if, if you've never had a chance to check out Pinky Sanchez, uh, formerly Pink Ant, especially with Chikara, dude, this guy is tremendous in-ring talent. Um, Combat Zone Wrestling Dojo Wars will be featuring two teams, Connor Claxton, Brittany Blake, Blackwater, Kurt Robinson, and Kefka the Quiet taking on Frankie Picard, Penelope Ford, Dan O'Hare, George Gatton, and Trooper Audubon. I apologize. I ran two. I ran one together, Blackwater and Kurt Robinson. They're not the same. They are indivi- they're separate individuals. Um, also, Combat Zone Wrestling will feature a showcase match in addition to the Dojo Wars match. Combat Zone Wrestling owner DJ Hyde will be taking on a mystery opponent. Um, oh, cool. Casey Carlisle is going to be there. Just noticed that little part, too. Um, will be a fan convention and a live family-friendly wrestling event. Once again, that is Saturday, October the 11th, 2015. Doors open and the convention starts at 3 p.m. The live event starts at 6 p.m. And that is this Sunday. Uh, front row seats, if available, 20 bucks. General admission, 15 Bleachers, 10 Available at the door. Once again, that is going to be the convention itself starts at 3. The live event starts at 6. And you've got a lot of great talent that is going to be there with a number of different companies. And I'm going to sit back and say this to the Bulldozer, Matt Tremont. My hat's off to you, brother. Hell of a job. Congratulations on this one. Wish I could be there. I can't be there in body, but I'll damn sure be there in spirit. And you know that for fact, my friend. Um, that's, you know, with everything going on. Yeah, live events. Get the hell out of the house and go check them out. But um, I wanted to get your, I want to get a little bit more input from you about the uh, Chris Jericho, Kevin Owens match from this past Sunday, I mean, uh, Saturday on the network. You know, I mean, Chris Jericho, 25 years in any career, any career is huge. In professional wrestling, that's a milestone. It's a huge milestone. Um, look at the amount of people that come and go in wrestling that don't even make it five years. Right. Don't even make it ten. Twenty-five? I mean, that's just a rare breed. Um, Kevin Owens doing the best work as a heel that WWE has seen. And, you know, Seth Rollins continues to be a credible heel, but more or less he's kind of a tweener, if anything. When you look at Kevin Owens, he's not afraid to brawl, not afraid to, afraid to wrestle, not afraid to fly. But as a heel, he's not afraid to cheat and get something called cheap heat or a cheap win. And I dig that. I thought the finish was good. I wanted to see Chris Jericho continue to tease the heel turn because it would have been gold for him to blame the fans for him losing. It just would have been gold. And I think what we saw at um, last pay-per-view, which name escapes me right now, I don't know why that happens, but I, it did. Anyway, when we saw Jericho come up short in the <laughs> six-man tag and do the, you know, the shoulder bump to Dean Ambrose, you can't ignore those things. This is one of those things we're talking about with continuity. Kevin Owens continues to do his story the right way. Any person he steps in the ring with, he always carries it that extra step. Jericho usually does this. Right. So for him to ignore that in light of his 25-year anniversary, I won't really hold that against him. I mean, how many of us can say 25 years in anything right. except life? <laughs> so, I mean, I, I have to give him the nod. It was super cool to see Lance Storm in the front row. Um, who was the elderly woman that Jericho kept pointing at? Was that his mother? May have been. 
I'm I'm curious about that. I could have swore, and maybe I'm wrong. Um, I'll have to go back and track down the podcast. I thought he said his mom had passed away. Well, see, I love the fact that he made a point to um, talk about his early days, and not right. to mention having. Um, yeah, that was John Stewart on the other side of um, of Lance Storm. But for him to point out Dr. Luther, Don Callis, Lance Storm, I thought it was absolutely tremendous. And for WWE, I popped bigger for Don Callis than I did for Lance Storm. By the way, I, I popped equally for both of those. Don, well, Cal- I mean, Lance Storm's expected at these types of events for me. I mean, I, I'm not super surprised to see him, but Don Callis, come on, man. Yeah, that's, that's a great Cyrus the Virus. Yeah, I know the network. Yeah. Trust me, I remember quite well <laughs> the network. This guy, I mean, he is very, he's always been a very underrated talent in the world of pro wrestling. Oh, very much so. Very much so. Um, and to be able to spotlight him, even in short, it's just a good homage or homage to uh, a very talented performer and a, a person that deserves more focus. Another huge, you know, since we're talking about great minds for the business, another just phenomenal mind for the industry yeah um maybe untapped still i yeah, and that would be the thing about it i would love to see what chris jericho could do in the creative role because i think with his mind with his intellect and with his thought process for the business um i would love to you know it wouldn't surprise me to see lance storm and chris jericho butt heads and actually do creative work for somebody because i think once again lance storm shows the fact that he is constantly he constantly shows that he is an uber intelligent person well and, and since we're talking about Uber intelligence, let's transition to the not so Uber intelligent for a moment. The TNA brain trust that just continues to go spiraling out of control. And I have to kind of take the train off the tracks here. How the hell do you have Matt Hardy win the title? And then because you don't have him on TV with your tapings, how do you take him off of being champion? And I know right now, I mean, the story is still being laid out. I understand, just as a fan, when would you put the title on somebody and then make him relinquish it the very next day? Now, that, that would be easy no enough sense. to do in this particular rec- in regard. Um, and, yeah, and there has been a storyline update as far as Matt Hardy relinquishing the championship. Um, yeah. But for me, it is very simple. And... Hmm, TNA is but this is where taping so many programs at a time They're is caught detrimental up. to your company. They're caught up. Oh, that's scary. Um, I think no, they they've are... got about a month worth of programming because the reason that they had it done was because the programming showed, except for Matt Hardy, everyone else that retained their titles. Right. So they're able to air some of their older footage, which, I mean, I would too, especially if I'm coming up on the end of a contract. But... If you're TNA, if you're Dixie Carter, G- uh, John Gubrick, the rest of those, wouldn't you want to put your best foot forward? And maybe, I mean, you can't really afford to do live. I get that. But wouldn't you want to try to do something different? I mean, I just. Okay, here's the trick. And this is where I did not Dixie see Carter's this. Dixie a trick? I knew that. There you go. I didn't know that this was being done before I came on air tonight. Right. Because what has been going through my head for the last 48 hours is the factor of how when Jeff Hardy basically, as an official during the match, cost EC3 the title mm-hmm. and had it put on um, basically they did it that way to, to transfer the title. Right. The first thing I would have done, because here's the trick on this, and here's another real trick. Hey, rookie. What's me pulling rabbit out of my head? <laughs> For those that are younger, that's Rocky and Bullwinkle. I know that's a little before your time, but it's damn funny cartoons. You Look it up on YouTube, kids. They got a bunch of them out there. I think it's on Netflix now, too. Cool. <laughs> Remind me to fire up Netflix later, first time in about a week. Um, I've got the DVD of The Avengers. I've yet to crack it open. Uh, what are you doing? You watch that over. I, I can't tell you how many times I've watched it. Oh, I watched it twice in theaters. I watched it twice in theaters. I've been waiting for this. I just haven't had two hours to watch the damn thing since I bought it Friday night. Twelve minutes, sir. (laughs) Say what? (laughs) Two hours and 12 minutes. And that's two hours and 12 minutes. A, I don't have yet. And B, I will thoroughly, thoroughly relish when I get a chance. Because the movie was great. And I got one word for you. I'm getting the sound bite from there from Captain America. And the next time you know who decides he wants to shoot his mouth, language. (laughs) 
<laughs> I will have that bite ready to go. Let there be no doubt. And and you know he would be the guy to to respond like Tony Stark. <laughs> he would be that guy. Did anybody not pay attention that he just said language? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hilarious. But um, the first thing that I would have done if I was EC three was petition Dixie Carter, petition the championship committee and the board of directors, saying that your official that you appointed cost me the title. He was unable to comp- come carry himself in a prof- in a professional and unbiased manager. I here to with demand, th- and I will file suit if I if that title is not held up or returned to me either way. Because I still the t- just think that's played out. I mean, I get it. I get the story idea there, but they stole it from Dusty. And oh, not God, kidding, that's awful. Don't not steal ki- from Dusty. Don't steal from Dusty. Why not? WWE's used two Dusty finishes in the last um last few months. They didn't steal that. He gave that. Well, still, look, I, I Dusty's the kind of guy that had notebook over notebook for yeah, finishes. I, I mean, I the guy just had all these ideas. I know. I mean, I can't tell you the number of ideas that i've got in my running around in my head half the time and i've got to get in touch with somebody over at peach state because since they don't have a commissioner in place right now i've got some ideas that i want to bounce off the owner because i think he might like them for a few weeks down the road i think this could actually work out very well and no i'm not trying to petition to become the new commissioner of peach state wrestling alliance but if offered we can negotiate hey can i do it from uh, via satellite no Ah, crap. If, I, if they want to offer me the right amount of money and nachos. We'll talk. And nachos. <laughs> and nachos, damn it. And a dog and a beer. <laughs> no, two hot dogs and three beers. <laughs> and not the 25 yeah, ounce. Inflation. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Cost of living. The, the high cost of living is. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Thank you, easy, Jamie. Easy there. Thank you, Jamie Johnson. The high cost of living is higher than the cost of living high. But I knew I'd get that line right in a minute. No, but seriously, I don't think that type of situation is played out because it hasn't been done recently, at least not on the national level. You haven't had a situation where a former champion has has sued to get his title back. Well, it, here's, here's a question. And you, you, made, you made a statement there that I would just have to ask you. TNA is, is still somewhat on a global level. Their exposure is waning. Do you still consider TNA a truly national presence? Not, I'm not saying compared to WWE because it's just not fair. Let's just be realistic. I mean, Ring of Honor has more presence right now than TNA. This is not meant to bury TNA as I usually do. What the point is, though, is that when you are looking at TNA right now and the decisions, not just Matt Hardy's decision, because Matt Hardy, by the way, is one hell of a hard worker. True. And certainly deserves his opportunity to shine. True. I have made it no secret that I'm not a big fan of his spouse because of just the way she handles herself on social media. However, that doesn't mean anything for Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy, the performer, is a solid candidate for world champion. Bar none. I, I mean, he should have had an opportunity in WWE a little bit better than ECW. They didn't know what to do with the guy. And much like any tag team, when you split them up, there's always the one guy they've got ideas for and the one guy they're just not sure. Well, let me jump in for a second because you and I have countering opinions on this one because I said in seg one, the simple fact to me that Matt Hardy, because of talent, is a great in-ring performer. Mm-hmm. However... Considering the factor of the visual presentation that he does of himself, he is not a world champion. He definitely doesn't help himself in a lot of different ways. And I don't think it's for lack of effort, but his physical appearance doesn't present himself as, you know, the top of the line, pinnacle shape kind of thing of a performer. When you look at a, a, a world champion... Look, look at guys like Yokozuna. You look at guys like Kali. These were guys that were larger than life. <clears throat> then you look at guys like John Cena, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, and the list goes on and on of guys that are in peak condition. They have something unique in their presentation, and they're not just sticking to some of the things that they know will, quote unquote, get over. And those are some of the drawbacks that Matt Hardy runs into. I think. In the right atmosphere, Matt Hardy can continue to grow, even at this stage in his career. I just don't think he's willing. Well, according to TNA Wrestling, 
they will be issuing a statement on Wednesday about the future of the TNA World Heavyweight title. Matt has posted a video announcing that he is vacating the title. He says he doesn't want to relinquish the title, but he needs to because it's what's best for TNA. Hardy said he will get another shot and he will win the title without controversy. I'm okay with this because it does save face for EC3. See, the finish itself, from what I've read, I have not. I said it during Seg 1, and I'll reiterate my comment. I have not watched Bound for Glory yet. Bad time, bad money. Can't do it. Sorry. Later, I'll be able to get it, and I'll probably try to get it on DVD from ShopTNA.com. And where it will be available very soon. But from what I've read, and from what I have seen and heard from other people, th- they opened the door for this because of the finish. And because the way the finish occurred, it didn't cheapen. And this is the thing that you got to remember. You have to remember this. After everything they'd invested in EC3, the buildup from the debut all the way through everything, including the Rockstar Spud saga, and moving him into the World Championship, to have him lose out the first time that he faced Matt Hardy, if he'd have lost clean in this match, that would have killed a lot of what they had been doing with him. However, considering the fact that you had Jeff lay him out, Matt get the pin, you save face and don't make EC3 look weak. It doesn't make Matt Hardy look that strong either. This is one of those weird circumstances where it's catch-22. You're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. If you let Matt Hardy go over clean in this regard, depending on the way it's done, if it's a small package or something like that, a sneaky win, it doesn't hurt EC3 and it doesn't hurt Matt Hardy. If you make, if they were to make it look like Sting versus Flair New Revolution back then, when Sting basically routed the match, then, but think about it is, Flair was already established. EC3 is still a growing commodity in pro wrestling and at TNA. Timing is everything Perception is reality. Execution is of the utmost, utmost. You have to get that right every time. So they've they've opened the doors. And I wouldn't be surprised if they bypass EC3 and say, well, technically you did lose the title even though our official did go renegade. We've decided to not return the title to you. I would love to see them just go ahead and scrap everything and put the title on the line in a tournament. I think a lot of us would like to see tournaments for titles. I mean, I was talking about this with uh, my buddies on Saturday. When you look at wrestling as a whole, when you look at the dynamic of what we enjoyed, we'll just use the example that we most commonly compare it to, WrestleMania 4. The formula was... You had a huge tournament for the most important title in our sport right? from their perspective. Um, you had the world's greatest talent in this tournament. Everyone had a reason to watch. Everyone had a reason to believe that their favorite could possibly win. Hogan, Savage, DiBiase, Andre, even Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Butch Reed, as weird as it seems, yeah. had a chance. Had a chance. Much like the Royal Rumble. It's why everybody likes the Royal Rumble. Because right. you never know what they're going to do. That's where tournaments are great. Where tournaments suck is when they're just too <laughs> imbalanced. Right. When you don't have the right kind of mixture of top tier, bottom tier, and mid card. That's what we can see as a benefit. The problem is with today's audience, not with us, but with today's audience, they don't have the patience for it. We can't build a proper tournament right now in WWE, for example, because everybody wants to see Daniel Bryan come back or Roman Reigns lose, or Bray Wyatt win. No one wants to see the story play out. No one wants to just wait and see what happens. It's, we have a very finicky wrestling audience right now, and it's getting worse because now there's companies, not WWE, and I commend them for this because they do not cater, or what's the other word, uh, coddle their fan base. Kowtow. That's right. They go forward with what they have regardless of what we say. And the reason is they can see the finish line. I don't think TNA can see the finish line right now. You have a great opportunity with Tyrus in the number one contender spot. And let's face it, 
He is a very, very underutilized talent and very capable in the ring. Him and EC3 could be great. I still stand by my, my prediction that I made a few weeks ago. I think EC3 is, is getting ready to go back to WWE. Unfortunately, I think that's going to happen with a lot of TNA's talent, including the Hardys. I'm sorry, I was reading something just now, and um, according to Mark Middleton over at Lords of Pain, there is talk within the company of a TNA Impact airing on another cable network in early 2016. No word yet on which network they're more likely to sign with, but there is still a very real possibility that TNA will be off TV in the United States, even if it's just for a few weeks or a month. When asked by people in TNA, some executives are saying that they will be on Destination America through the end of the year and then a new cable network in early 2016. Um, we don't know, and this, continuing the story, we don't know if WGN America is one of the networks TNA is talking to, but WGN America was interested in working with them before the Destination America deal was signed. One of the reasons TNA did not go with WGN is because the network wanted to push the Impact premiere back a few months into 2015. TNA may, may however, be talking to as many as four different networks at this point. End story. Um, you know, if they do get WG in America, that'll once again give them a national presence. WG in America is on just about every major cable and satellite outlet in the United States. Uh, remember, WWE did have a deal with WG in America for main event for a while there, and it just never did work out because it was like, uh, no. <laughs> Well, the main event fell flat. I mean, they had good matches, and then they just kind of lost sight, much like they do with any other third-tier show. It's just it's hard to focus for them. Now, here's my question. Mark Middleton is a very intelligent reporter. He knows how to check his sources, but my question is, who's his source? Because if it's anybody in the top, top brass in TNA, it's most likely a lie. Like I said, I mean, well... Let's and by the same token, um, I will challenge, I mean, I'm not going to, okay, I'm not challenging Mark Middleton, but I'm also going to sit back and challenge everybody who holds the almighty Meltzer as the be-all, end-all in oh, wrestling oh journalism. God, awful. Yeah, and I actually said his name on the station, I have to go run a lap around the block, so that's that's the rule that I have in place. Um, same you owe thing, everybody a beer or something. Same thing with uh, Keller and Caldwell over at Torch. Look. Um, there are a lot of sites out there, and there's one person that I actually genuinely can sit back and say we'll get the right answer, and that's Aptor nine times out of ten. But in this day and age, he's more op-ed than anything else, and I'm perfectly cool with that. Bill Aptor has done his time. He's earned his stripes. He has earned respect from the real pro wrestling community, not just the IWC. Those who want to take their little pot shots at Bill Aptor, grow up, get a damn life. Got to say that every single time I'm on Twitter, and I see a photo that gets posted from Tammy Sitch. The temptation to utilize my PayPal account is there. I have to say that it is very tempting. Not tempting enough to truly follow through, <laughs> but definitely tempting. I Sorry. Back, I'm, back to I'm, I'm not going to pay to watch her on Skype. I have a nudie bar in my town, and I have real nudie bars two hours away from my town. Tell me why I'm going to sit back and watch Skype. Sorry, Tammy. Love you to death. World of respect. Nothing but love. But I'm sorry. I'm not spending money on Skype. Now, if you want to come here to my house, okay, I'll fly in. But that's a different story. Um, <laughs> fly her in? Wow. So much for Skype accounts. Let me just send her that quick message. I got a guy that's going to fly you. That's money. She might take it, sir. I didn't say I'd pay her. I just said I'd fly her in. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you'll pay her. <laughs> then I'll pay my doctor. I'm sure she's got somebody for the hustle. Do 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 dun 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 dun. Do the hustle. Okay. <laughs> Set me up you for see, that one. Only you and me get those jokes. It's so inside baseball when we do that. Hello, I'm Mel Allen. Okay. <laughs> still, oh, still man. one of the most. You know the problem. The problem with what we're seeing right now in televised wrestling is aside from Lucha Underground, which I caught wind of a news bit the other day that was heartbreaking. You know that Lucha Underground in season one lost $14 million? I believe it. And you want, you want to know why? They don't charge for tickets. Yeah. I'm, I mean, Mark Burnett is a brilliant television person. He knows what he's doing. And I know he will fix this, even if it's $5 a ticket. 
he will find a way to make it work. <laughs> 14, you can't afford to lose that kind of money unless you've got unlimited funds coming in from somewhere. Well, let now me let's, go. Let's, okay. Let's call a spade a spade. Mark Burnett's probably like a billionaire right now, so he does have the money to lose. But damn. Well, let me go and give you this one. First off, kudos to everybody at Lucha Underground for one hell of a first season. And season two is forthcoming. You have a product in Lucha Underground that people are still talking about season one and Ultima Lucha. People are still talking about, oh, oh my God, and Helico and taking flight on two different occasions. Please How say- about the trio's title being huge? Oh, yeah. Huge. Eclipsing titles on the mainstream programming. Yes. Just the product itself is phenomenal. The Josephs and the rest of that crew deserves, I don't know, an Emmy? A Slammy? What, what do we give them? Because they give them an Emmy. The credit in the world for it. <laughs> and considering you had a lot of people watching it on YouTube, I'd give them a Webby, too, while we're at it. Amen to that. Because the product is good. Yes. And you know what? Don't overcomplicate it. It's simple. A good guy hates a bad guy. A bad guy hates a good guy. The cheaters cheat. The good guys win. It's how it's wrestling is supposed to be performed. That's just it. They got and the chemistry right. at the end of every story. It's a chemistry it is yes. a genuinely a chemistry thing, and Lucha Underground has had great chemistry in the shows, a great flow, great continuity all the way from day one. Look, I'm not always a big fan of the psychotic heel authority figure, but I've got to sit back and say this. Dario Cueto could be the next coming of Vince McMahon, of Mr. McMahon. Oh, I think he is the top heel to not be on mainstream television. And you really can't say that about El Rey anymore because they're continuing to grow at a pretty rapid pace. Yes. Which is one of the reasons it was so difficult for season two to get the green light. Because it's growing so quickly, they're looking at their money coming in. Now, they can trust Mark Burnett to make smart decisions, and they know this. So they're going to give him the okay, but they have to say, okay, well, if you're not making money and your ratings don't grow this next season – we're going to have to make a different decision. Their ratings are strong enough to where that will carry them. The fact of the matter is, El Ray was more determined to run promos for their other shows than to actually right. run commercials for during the Lucha Underground time slot. Look, I cannot <laughs> tell you the number of times that I would hear store um, that I would see the promos for No Hands Flying Star, you know, Kendo Stick Up the Butt Tuesdays, or whatever the hell they were calling it. I mean, and of course, how many times? In other times? words, combat zone. No, I'm sorry. Sorry. Ow. No, no. Ow. Cheese grater to the face. Sorry. Yeah, there you go. Um, weed whacker to the stomach. Oh, that's just nasty. <laughs> Thank you, wife beater. Oh, God. God, that you stays gone by. Every time I think combat zone, I know it's a contrite it's cliche for, for a better, or lack of a better term. I think a necro butcher. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Now, but I mean that's just because the, the well, honestly, and this is because I hey I'm very much an admitted television wrestling fan, so it's because of the wrestler. But I mean, in the footage I have seen of Necro Butcher, aside from that, and I have seen his other work. Let's let's not get it twisted. I mean, the guy's insane. Yes. So I mean, it's just ridiculous. But yes. Why does Lucha Underground not have merch? I thought they did have T-shirts. They they had like some kind of promotion thing going on with wrestling tees at one point. They need an endorsement plan. They, they need a need DVD set a for season one. I, I'll, I'll say this right now: Lucha Underground needs to release the full DVD set for season one, every episode. Do you think they would make money off that in, this, yes. in this industry right now? Do you yes. think they would they would come out ahead? Yes, I think they would. Hell, anything's better than nothing at all. If you may, if well, you may. okay, that's fair, but you have to remember the production for the DVD. You have to remember the shipping and that's dirt cheap nowadays. That's dirt cheap What's nowadays. That? The production for the DVDs is dirt cheap. It'll cost you more to print up the graphics for the label for the DVD box than it would to produce the DVDs. You know what made Lucha Underground cool too? It was filmed in HD. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, think about Ring of Honor. They're aired not in HD. And it drives me insane. You can't have that good of a wrestling show and not be in HD. Wait a minute. Are you watching on Destination America HD? Are you watching on Destination America? Are you watching on Sinclair? 
I'm watching it on Sinclair. Finally, I have a cable provider, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's a miracle. A cable provider that lets me watch Ring of Honor every now and again. Now, Still not as much as I'd like, but at least I get to see it every now and again. Because see, but it's not I'll, HD and it drives me insane. Actually, it's HD on the right channel. Uh, that figures. Burn. Um, where's Ashton Kutcher when I need it? Uh, <laughs> because um, I've I know got. Where he's hold at. on. Let Lucky. me. Hold on. Let me do this because I'm going to pull up my DVR right now and resume playback. Ring of Honor from this past weekend, and it is letterboxed. I hate that. Don't it, letterbox. No, full it's screen HD. Damn no, it. it's full screen because once I hold on, let me turn on. Do you do the stretch thing? The no, stretch gimmick where it's no. all like out there. No, let I, me hold on. Let me turn on. Let me go ahead and go back to. Let me pull up my 32 inch in here in Studio One Two, and I will sit back and you son of a buzzard. Hold on, we're doing this live, kids. Bear with me for. Is that a? Oh, that's CrossFit crap. Well, while you're tracking that down, I'm still seeing on Twitter wrestling no, dirt sheets. It's posting it's that HD. CM Punk blasts Susan G. Komen. Yeah. Yeah, you know, here's the problem with that. First and foremost, CM Punk is not a wrestler anymore. When he decides to come back, and he will, then it's then it's legit. Okay? Right now, you can't put him in a wrestling dirt sheet. You just can't do it. You don't see Here's, here's the thing, and I don't like the guy, but you don't see the Observer putting CM Punk in wrestling news. He's in MMA news. These are dirt sheets fighting for clicks, by the way. Yeah. Drives me nuts. I, there's a number that I don't go to. If I go to your so-called website and the first thing I do is fight a pop-up, I'm not going back. Well, God, so, that's just about all of them now. No, Lords of, uh, Lords of Pain doesn't have pop-ups. And you know why? That's because Calvin Martin is a genius. I'm, they, I'm friends with the guy that owns Lord's Pain. Okay. Hell of a They've got ads on Maybe the left. No start. They got ads on the left, ads on the right, ads at the top, ads at the bottom. They've got that annoying word crap underlying pop up th- or you know mouse over thing, which I've opted out of more times than I've gone to the bathroom in the last six weeks. In other words, I've I would hope so. I've opted that. out of that thing a ton of times. No, I've opted out of that thing more times. Okay, let me clarify. I've opted out of that thing more times in the last two days than I've gone to the bathroom in the last three weeks. There, there's your simile. All right, thank you. No problem, Yin Yang. Why would people? Okay, look, I, say what you want about Tammy Sitch. I mean, you know, she's doing what she's doing. She's got to make money. Everybody's got to earn a living. And it's not like she's doing a whole lot else. Why would people call her a webcam whore? That's mean. That's not cool, man. Is she naked on webcam? And that I'm aware of. Is she, has, is she having sex on a webcam? No. Is she doing obnoxious things for her body on a webcam? Now, that I can't confirm because I've not seen it. But okay. that I'm aware of, she's not been having sex on cam. She's a Skypo. <laughs> Jeez. And I love her to death. I'm just saying, I'm just saying dude. I still, have a, I still have a world of like for Tammy Sitch. She she is Skypo. She you know what? I had the and I told her this when I met her, by the way. Just like Corey is a WR ho. Well, that's goes without saying. When I met Tammy Sitch at the awesome wrestling entertainment show in Fishersville, Virginia, um, honest to God, I told her I've had a crush on her since I was sixteen. <laughs> because wow. I mean it's Tammy Sitch. How do you not have a crush on her? But anyway. America. Sigh. America. <laughs> Heavy sigh. <laughs> and I just realized the time. Let's go ahead and start heading for the radio ranch. Stan, last call, my friend. Oh, gosh. You got NXT TakeOver. If you missed the 24, WWE 24 special about the Brooklyn show, take the time to watch it. Catch the table for three with the Intercontinental Champions. Hilarious work about uh, the ribs that they did to Ryback. Um, wrestling right now is interesting. It's coming up on the road to WrestleMania as we get closer to Summer Sl- SummerSlam, Survivor Series. Things are going to start heating up very, very, very quickly. It's going to be interesting, and I'm excited to see it. Um, of course, you can find me on Twitter at Fight Grub Fight, uh, Facebook. I'm still around there sometimes, and of course, I can pop in here whenever I can. Um, Wrestle Rage this Sunday night, I believe, at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Corey does have a guest lineup. At least he said he did. Um, still trying to finalize the details of it. Wrestle Rage BR on Twitter as well. 
Ah, God. It's always nice to join you, Eddie. I always like hanging out. I always hate to see the clock tick down. Yeah. And for the record, Ring of Honor in HD is HD. Oh. Now, the reason... Well, I, the reason I sit corrected, then. The okay. reason why I said it's letterboxed is because I have a 35-inch traditional television underneath my 32-inch HD. Oh. So in a four in a four by three format screen, which is what my thirty five inch is, it's letterboxed, top bottom. However, on my thirty two inch HD flat screen, it's full screen. Hmm. Well, I, again, I said corrected. So I've been so advised. <laughs> <laughs> and I was playing with my DVR. Did you give out uh, social media and everything else? Yeah, yeah. That's okay. uh, that's where I'm at this week. <laughs> what social media? Yeah, pretty much, because uh, I'm not really sure of where I'm at on Sunday. Uh, until my life decides to regulate, or until I decide to uh, finally blow the dynamite. <laughs> and um, boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, you know, it, I love coming out here and, and hanging with you, and I, I do certainly miss broadcasting on, on Sundays, but maybe I'm becoming more of a Tuesday night delight. You never know. Oh, you didn't say that. Well, I, I wouldn't say I'm John Morrison, but, you know, all I can say is no one ever, has ever seen me and John Morrison in the same place. <laughs> Funny. Funny. Let me go ahead and run this real quick. Matter of fact, let me switch headsets so I can come over here and click this little button right about here. I want to remind everybody, and I pretty much said what I wanted to say about certain issues during the first segment of tonight's program. I will have a new My Side of the Coin set and ready to go tomorrow night for um, the To Be Determined show. Start time is going to be 9 o'clock p.m. Central, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific time. Not safe for work, not safe for kids, not safe for virgins, not safe for grandma, not safe for church. You hear that, Corey? It's not safe for virgins. And not safe for you bleeding heart leftists out there. We get raw. Oh, God, here we go. Here we go. Let's throw some politics in it. Not safe for all you hardcore righties out there either. We get we get a little bit obscene. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. And if you'd have given me a second before thinking about that, or before coming in the way you did, I was getting ready to attack both sides. We are members of the It Should Not Always Be Green Party. I don't know. I'm a big fan of green. What time is it? Exactly. Uh, well, that green too. I mean, nothing wrong with that. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> What you got to do is what you got to do. It should not always be green. <laughs> sticky, sticky. Thank you again to the state of Colorado. <laughs> you know, if we don't have, <laughs> if we don't have at least one reference to the to the fine green of America, <laughs> it's just not a beyond ringside product. <laughs> you know, know what? You remember what they did, or you heard about what they did last week, right? Uh, no. The great state of Colorado. And I mean this sincerely. I'm not being mm -hmm. sarcastic. Because of the fact that they underestimated the amount of tax revenue that they would take in off the sale of marijuana. And because of the fact that they made more than they projected they would make. They gave the pot smokers in, in Colorado a tax-free day for buying marijuana. Legit. Seriously. They gave they gave the cannabis they gave the pot smokers in Cal in Colorado a tax free holiday for a day. I think that's ultimately cool as hell. Hmm. Yeah. You can't argue with that. Think about it. The state government is sitting back going, "Look, we've got a surplus. We made more than we thought we were going to off this stuff. Let's turn around and impress the people and give them a tax free holiday for cannabis." Unanimous vote. It passed. It went into play. Don't they already have April 20th? Yeah. No, it just it was later in the year. <laughs> it was later. Ah. No, this was, like I said, it was last week. A tax free holiday for cannabis. Bless you, Colorado. Washington, it's your turn. I think that I need to go ahead and establish a piece of land here in Alabama and call it a sanctuary city for cannabis for t um, people who partake. Wow, I should just get everybody on board and just move. <laughs> Always said I'd look good in Alabama. <laughs> there you go. We ought to do it in Atlanta, Georgia. That way we'd be closer to Peach State and AWE. 
You know what? Is as much of a and I don't mean this to put a, uh, Atlanta down, but the truth is, as much as I've ever heard that Atlanta's a cesspool, they sure do got a lot of wrestling action going on there. They got a lot. They got some good shows, and they got some shows that suck. And I'm honest about that. Well, I mean, if they're letting Corey in the door, there's some concerns. He does wear his knee pads, and he does bring his own tarp. So yes, he does. He's his own cleanup crew. Womp <laughs> womp. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, speaking about not speaking politics. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a really crappy Pac-Man death. <laughs> That's all right. You know he's sitting back fuming right now and his ears are burning. No, he's not. He's probably sleeping. No, I if know. If anybody him. works more than me, it'd probably be him. He's listening. I guarantee to you. Let's take it home. Folks, here's the rundown real quick. Once again, tomorrow, October 7th, or excuse me, it's almost today, October 7th on the East Coast. Uh, the To Be Determined Show, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Pacific Time. Um, there is talk about a brand new show coming up on Friday nights. Be careful. You could end up with the receipt for your actions. This coming Saturday, October the 10th, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 Central, 9 Mountain, 8 Pacific. The Beyond Ringside Saturday Showcase returns. Yours truly, the cause, Shane Knowles. All back behind the helm this coming Saturday morning. What's going to happen? You never know. And, of course, on the 11th, the trifecta returns. Beyond Ringside Live, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Wrestle Rage Radio at 8, 9 p.m. Eastern. And at 11 p.m. Eastern, the brand new episode of the Midnight Black Mass with Reverend Dan Wilson. If you have not heard any, if you've not listened to the Midnight Black Mass lately, oh boy. The Dark <laughs> Gospel. You got to check it out sometime, seriously. At he would have an awesome lead in for Paul Hannon. That'd be cool as hell. Yeah, it would. Speaking of managers that um, just absolutely kick ass and take names, in addition to Reverend Dan Wilson, I've had a chance to work with him absolutely incredible in person. Um, also had a chance to uh, finally meet, hang out with, and work with Jeff G. Bailey this past Saturday at um, Peach State Wrestling Alliance. Absolutely incredible. And he's going to actually be joining me in a couple of weeks here on Beyond Ringside Back to Basics. Looking forward to that. Next Tuesday, I do believe, is the weekend that I'm going to be joined by a longtime friend of the family and colleague, the Bomber Jack Lord, right here on Back to Basics, the 10 count. Southern wow. Legacy, exactly. Southern Legacy Wrestling coming up on the 18th, and Jack is going to give us the full rundown and all the surprises. Some exclusives, too. Surprises, exclusives, same damn thing. Yeah. Looking forward to next Tuesday night. That is going to be October the 13th. Want to invite everybody to come join me this Friday night at Buffalo Wild Wings in Alabaster. 9 p.m. start time, Friday night karaoke, to which I will put in front of that. Hashtag the party continues. That's my baby. Friday night's Buffalo Wild Wings, always a great time. All ages welcome to sing. And it's always great family fun for everyone. And for the record, yes, the Rolling Rock Tall Draft is still on special for $2.50. DJ's choice. <laughs> They also have other drink <laughs> specials going on that night, too. Yeah, I'm going to have me a Rolling Rock this coming Friday. It's a hey, good. if you want to get me some dirty martinis, I'm good with that. Well, get your ass down to Birmingham. Sounds good to me. There you go. Road trip. How many times have we tried to get you on a hashtag BR road trip down to Atlanta? Oh, my God. You know, the one time that happens, you know what's going to happen. I'm going to wake up hungover and in some strange person's house, and it's just not going to be healthy. Well, I already said you could probably make the drive in how many hours? Uh, I think we last did the calculation somewhere between six and eight, depending on the highway. So if you were to leave on Friday night, you can pull into town Saturday morning on the 17th. Um, mm -hmm. we could, and we could get the hashtag road trip together. You could join us at Peach State Wrestling Alliance, turn around from there, um, crash for the night in a hotel room, wake up around lunchtime, hit the road, go back up to Virginia. You'd make it there before, mon before Monday morning. You'd be on time for work. Man, it's got this planned out, folks. I always think, especially on road trip stuff. I think before I open my mouth. And think, even if you waited till four, oh, wow. if you, oh. huh? I said, "Wow, you're, you're thinking before you open your mouth." Is that something we do on this network? Shh. <laughs> You'll ruin my image. Like I, what image? <laughs> oh, 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 what image? <laughs> I'm just. I don't have an image. I'm just your plain everyday Joey. I mean Joe. 
Well played, sir. Thank you, Ron Simmons. Uh, At Beyond Ringside on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Beyond Ringside Live and Facebook.com slash Beyond Ringside. We are also on MySpace, LinkedIn, and Google Plus as well. For me personally, at Fast Eddie Lane on Twitter, as a bunch of you know after yesterday. Also on Instagram at Fast Eddie Lane, and my personal website is FastEddieLane.com. Updates are being made to the photo section as well as to the front page of the video section. I haven't updated the news section yet, so get off my ass. It takes a minute sometimes to sit down and think about what I'm going to type. Phil Stamper, always a pleasure. Thank you for coming on. Look forward to having you back on in a couple of weeks with some more updates and also finding out what's going on in your personal career. Stan Grubb, always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. (laughs) Until next we meet, ladies and gentlemen, once again for Phil Stamper, for Stan Grubb, say goodnight. Good night. To the ridge. I'm going to smack you. <laughs> <laughs> I am the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Study Lane saying adios, das vadanya, hasta luego, auf Wiedersehen, ciao, sayonara, adieu, whatever that you farewell, I'll see you. And until we meet again, aloha means bye bye. Folks, join us right here next time as we all go beyond ringside. And while I got it on my mind, don't make it complicated, don't make it complex. Don't make it harder than it has to be. Because once you do all that, and you find out it works a little bit better if you take it. Back to basics. Bye for now.